Press red to go active and take control of this one. Going to be hot as we wrap up the opening half of the split round. Hill and White, the Ruckman, in the middle. Ooh, Mark Johnson on, came in off the line and just missed, collecting a couple. McPhee for Heffernan, now for Johns. Bradley squirts it out wide for Welsh. Now Essendon can go forward first. Heffernan delivers. Good ball. Reynolds with the mark. Feeding it off. Long to the pocket. Lucas in front. Rivers provides the spoil. Monfries and Bartram. A couple of young up-and-comers. Boundary throw in. James Heard starting forward and Carroll's got the job on him. There's the bench for the Bombers. Watson back into the side with Peveril, Camperiali and Ryder. McVay, Boundary throw in. McVeigh normally gets the uh, big job for the Bombers and he's gone straight to Uze. And a Melbourne player has gone down there and is a little slow to get up. It is Carroll. Just notice Jason Johnson. He was just charging through, trying to pick the ball up on the way to goal. And uh, Reed was just buffeted by a couple of Essendon players. Here's McPhee. Has had the acid put on him by coach Kevin Sheedy. Heffernan. Dragged down. Davey. Loitering in the back half. Working it with Pickett. Quick handball will be stolen. Bombers can sit up. Slattery for Reynolds. Loose men on out wide and hits him on the chest, Bolton. Well, they're here to play the Bombers. They're... Uh being true to the pre-game antics of trying to uh, get inside the demon's heads. And you can just tell by the body language initially, uh, at least, Wayne, that Essendon are up for the contest. No question about that. This, uh, well, a lot of people said this could be a danger game for the Demons. They've been in great form. We saw them uh, beat Collingwood convincingly last week. But uh, the Bombers are here to play. Mark Bolton for the first score. The kick from 50 is holding up across the face. A couple of big leaps, and the Demons are happy to concede a rush behind. Essendon 1 in 10. They've lost the last 10 in a row as the Demons break to done. The longest losing streak in club history, 14 in a row back in 1933. Well, it was a good move by Lyndon Johnny. He had to really work hard, but his man Kepler Bradley has stayed back, and he's blocking up the space for David Neach. Phil he's Reed. The angry ant, Phil Reed. Yep back in the side last week and uh, did a pretty good job. Didn't he? Had 22 touches in the big win on Queen's birthday by 47 points. Seven of their last eight. Now, Reid didn't really want to bomb it long in the end. Had to. Neats in a little wrestle with Solomon. Lovett Murray electing to keep it in and the kick was precise to Bolton. And now Essendon can go. Lucas on the wing. Thumping ball up to the 50. Reynolds is going to run onto this. Got a good bounce. Handball to his own advantage. Courtney Johns going to ground, Monfrey's there, Hill, Reynolds again, Bombers starting well! Joel Reynolds with just his second goal of the season, they're up and about. And it was a good attack on the footy from Courtney Johns, we've heard a lot about him. I thought he showed signs last week of, uh, of taking a step forward, but Monfrey's, he goes... He, Week after week, Monfries goes at the hard ball, and you see here, it's because of his hardness and the handball that uh, he gets out causes this goal. And it's that one there, that that little give there, that uh, caused that goal. Great goal to Reynolds. 20 possessions to four, Essendon's way, including five to one by way of the contested ball. Hill and White. Travis Johnston couldn't control it. Heffernan tied up. We'll get a bounce. Easy, easy, let him up now. Let him well, up. just work rate at Don't the moment. Really if you wanted to assess both sides, you'd say that the Bombers' work rate is double that of uh, the Demons, who just haven't quite started the match yet. Bates, Sylvia, Johnson and Jamar, the starting bench for the Demons, as Essendon threatened to go forward again. McPhee thumps it inside, 50, Cameron Bruce, nice catch. And every stoppage we have, McPhee's going straight to Johnson and uh, putting the acid test to him. McDonald to White. At full stretch, the big man recovers well. Caught. Oh, poor awareness there from Jeff White. Stanton with the tackle. Mark Johnson, the pickup. Loose men in the middle. Lucas uses McPhee. Will he be the springboard today? Sending it wide, and Courtney Johns getting involved early. Yeah, they've got to pick up McPhee. He's already uh, loose across half back, and he will get a pulse of the ball if that happens. And Johns goes deep. Bolton again in the goal square. Will Melbourne concede? Bartram does. Just had to hold his ground there, Bolton. He, uh, he had the right position. The kick was perfect for him, but just misjudged the ball. Yep. 
Demons bring it back into play to Green. Well, they're doing pretty well here, Essendon, because they're pushing up. They're almost doing a forward flood and not allowing Melbourne to get the ball out quickly. Green going wide. Lyndon done with the mark. Melbourne have won three of the last four between these two clubs over the last two years, including both last year. Before that, Essendon had owned them, winning 12 of 13, including the all-important grand final of 2000. This is Ward now, can amble away. Neats and Solomon, going to be a good deal today. Two grabs, not the all-important third for the Melbourne skipper. And Solomon for Bradley, and now they can work it out. Although Davies in the way. McDonald, Pickett goes without it. A couple of targets being missed, bad signs here. Bruce, too slow, gone. Play on the call. Bolton, handball for Stanton. Essendon running. Has a bounce. Could he go all the way? 55 out. Stanton unloads long. And it's through for a behind. Yeah, bad signs for Demon supporters because players are getting dragged down. Awareness is not great. We've seen a couple of experienced players. Jeff White won. I think it was uh, Travis Johnson and another getting taken down in tackles. And targets are also being missed one. Just no off the ball. They, they are. They are. Uh, not on the ball right at this point in time, but uh, the Bombers have hit this game flat out. Yeah, they're exposing it. They've just the pressure is is uh, cook alike, and they're spot on. Our umpires wide for sound. Chris Camelins, Craig Hendry, and Martin Ellis on Fox Footy Sunday, six to one on the inside fifties for the Bombers, who are manning up here. And so Melbourne break from the huddle, and they usually get it in. Although Holland, well, had the arms chopped by Mark Johnson. Well, the Demons went the huddle. They had a couple of breaking. Travis Johnson just uh, pushing back, getting some kicks down back. Not 15. The kick for McDonald quickly defers to Carroll. Now Bruce for Travis Johnston. Robertson on the lead. Love it. Murray is his opponent. Uze's being picked up by McVeigh. Robertson. Centering ball for Bruce. Couldn't hang on. Davey now. Threatened by Slattery who affects a wonderful steal. McVeigh going nowhere. Davey thieves it, but his hurry kick forward is marked by the former skipper. Well, they're not going to make life easy for David Neitz. They are pushing good players back. McPhee's pushing back. And Hurd has interchanged with McPhee. He's pushing back. And they've been business off the ball here. We've got uh, Dean Solomon yep. giving it to Cameron Bruce. Hurd. With the 50, bad checking Melbourne, Stanton in space, question of accuracy, and he has sprayed it, and it's one goal, four to nothing. It was a good little scuffle there between uh, Solomon and Bruce, and uh, had a bit of a scuffle and then helped him up. <laughs> McDonald, short, Rivers, kicked two goals last week, the first two goals of his AFL career. Both coming in the one afternoon as he said us for White. Well, right now, Melbourne have uh, played a get-out-of-jail-free card because they have been totally dominated in this quarter, and yet they're only ten points down. Mm. Essendon could quite conceivably have three goals on the board. Whelan back in the demon side, goes short, Neats marks a couple of kicks out from goal. A terrific year, 27 goals, eight records each week. The games played for Melbourne, captaincy games and goals kicked for the club. As he said, it's for Carroll, who drives it long to the pocket. Bradley standing tall. A nice mark. He's a little ginger getting up, but the Bombers are away. Love it. Murray going for McPhee, but over his head. Ward gleefully accepts the prize and hits Robertson on the chest. Well, it looks like McPhee's playing on a half-forward flank. He's been picked up by Ward, but... He is just charging down a block up the space across that half-back line. And we've seen he's picked up a number of kicks. Well, this time, the disposal was so poor, it went straight to Ward. And he was lucky enough to pinpoint it. It had to be spot on. Russell Robinson gets an easy shot. You're right, Jared. You said before that uh, the Bombers are getting numbers behind the ball. We know James Heard uh, started for it, but playing deep in defence right at this point in time. Robinson gets the Ds on the ball. Took nine minutes. His 20th goal for the season is played in all 12 matches now. Another look at the build-up. Well, disposal errors just kill you in this game. The long bombs to uh, players up the ground used to disguise a lot of disposal errors. But these days, pinpoint passes, they're either spot on or they go up the other end and embarrass you. And on that occasion, that one hurt on the scoreboard. 
Travis Johnson and Jeff White both come off uh, for their first break of the day. You'll find they'll do it probably every eight minutes like they have in the last few weeks. McPhee in the centre at the present time. Greg Green on a wing and Heffernan is uh, running with him. They're pushing blokes behind the ball more than I've seen for some time, the Bombers. Shamar with the palm down. Jason Johnson is wrapped up. And to do, that, it, to do that, to do that, your work rate just has to be uh, absolute. Well, well, it does, and uh, you have to have the fitness, as you said, Jared, to do it all day. Because uh, if you start behind the ball, you eventually have to run forward if you're going to kick a winning score to win. And at the moment, though, uh, the demons hanging in there, and the bombers, they look like they're on today. Carroll gets rid of Hurd. Play on the call. Hurd gets it back on the knock from Heffernan. Feed Stanton on the run. Has already had a couple of shots. A little gun shy there with the third. And it's helped through for a behind. When I say they're pushing them back, they're not starting them back there as in flooding, but as soon as they lose possession, then they charge. And when you do the charge, it's a 150 metre sprint. If you do that uh, 20 or 30 times a quarter, you know you're in for a pretty uh, torrid half time. Carroll. A revelation this season at 25 in the Demons' defensive zone. Goes for a first-year player in Dunn against Bradley, and the boundary line will win out. And already you can see it uh, just starting to have its effects. Halfway through a quarter, Thanks, players for the uh, Bombers just not pushing as hard on that occasion down. Watson and Campriani awaiting their return to the fray. Essendon, the least number of interchange moves over the last month of the AFL. About 33 changes a game as McDonald from the attacking side of the outer wing blazes away and Bradley's there again now working hard for him and rewarding the run this is Welsh Lucas engages in a wrestle at half forward gets rid of his opponent illegally and Rivers will get the free and McPhee's given away a 50 he's got the ball don't lose the Welsh Rivers Jared Rivers will take the kick. Disappointing for the Bombers there, Clinton, because uh, they'd set that up pretty well. And uh, Adam McPhee, he was charging towards goal. I think he had a suspicion that it wasn't his free kick, though. Byron Pickett driving it deep, needs 14 wide. Got hands to it, couldn't hang on. Bradley goes without it. McVeigh met solidly. Dunn got it to Uze. His kick across the face. Already an interchange down on the uh, boundary line, Scotty. Yes, uh, McDonald coming off for Sylvia, but uh, they, they've known Melbourne to uh, really do it by the clock as well. So we'll, uh, we'll see them try and get their structures done today. Sylvia kicked three in the VFL last week for Sandringham, Melbourne's affiliate, as Bolton marks solidly on the wing. Nearly halfway through the opening term, a goal apiece. Bolton for Lucas. Melbourne with numbers. Good work from Holland. Good bump too by Jason Johnson, but the Demons prize it clear. Holland to Reed. Now Hurd filling the gap. Takes the mark. Now free kick for the loser. Yep. He was just grabbed a, a little bit. I thought down for him on that go. No 50 this time. Yeah, it was 50 metres just one minute ago. For McFee kicking the ball. Why wasn't that 50? Uze hurrying, centering ball. Bradley charging out after it. Heard gets away from Dunn. James Heard being allowed to play that loose man in defence at the moment. Yeah, you got uh, Nathan Carroll at the other end of the ground. I know who I'd prefer to have loose. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Rivers with the spoil. Here's Brad Green, the gabber. Hits Davey. Now, men breaking towards the boundary line for him, although he's going to the centre corridor. Curious option because Monfries was there. Now McVeigh, and off the counter attack. Bombers are going, although Reynolds has got to beat a couple. Well, three on one. He does all right, but Mr. Mark Johnson with the handball. Johnson followed up well. Welsh back for Johnson. Trying to get rid of Byron. Ward. It's hot early. Whelan for Green. Now he's a good user of the footy. On the lead, Robertson. Well read by Lovett Murray. Just can't afford to have James Hurd fighting no. back there. He will get 35 possessions this half. <laughs> and he can use them like that. Heffernan and awaiting it. And that's where all their springboard is starting to come from. Melbourne's getting an inside 50, okay. But uh, 
they're getting it rebounded and James Heard we know has had limited time on the ground being injured for so long he needs a rest and on comes Joe Watson. McPhee uses Courtney Johns will have to kick it from just on the 50 at right half forward and has kicked four goals for the season Courtney Johns today is his fifth match the young man who has been very patient and with his AFL career battling a raft of hip and then hamstring injuries important kick here Bombers trying to capitalise on some good work and it will land five metres out Hill in a pack, Jamar the spoil, Heffern and a chance and misses as well well Colin Sylvia, he should have a look at the tape there and just see where he needs to improve because I'm not even saying that Heffernan was his man but Heffernan was four metres clear and he was five metres behind him not paying him any respect and a goal should have come from that probably should have done better Heffernan yeah. good mark from Green Though he's gone to a one on two oh. the leaping Clint Bartram this kid just gets better by the minute oh. and he's going to have a shot at goal as well Played on Leon Davis last week and uh, Leon da Davis got off to a great start kicking the first goal of the game but from there Bartram I thought was pretty good yeah. and was under under an injury cloud, uh, had an AC joint Jared, and last week Let's have a look at this Oh please umpire Must have, uh, must have had, uh, well, had a couple of injections to play last week You can see the strapping on the left shoulder there and uh, the little bit of padding to, to cover that uh, yeah. cover that area What about the 50? 50 was ordinary. It's a shocker. And Melbourne, as a result, are in front. I reckon that goes down as the worst 50 of the year. <laughs> is it technically right but morally oh, look, wrong? There's no such thing as that, uh, Clinton. This well, is hang on, just no not such 50. thing as technically that's right. Not, that's not 50 metres. But is it Come technically on. right? No, it's not. Okay. That is a joke. If no. that's 50 metres, then the, the rule's wrong. Well, technically, technically, is it technically right? Well, at the start of the year, you would probably say yes. No, not for that. But they've, no, but, for they've, that. but they've lapsed on it. That's what I'm saying. That's not 50 metres. Don't get me wrong. That is not even close to being 50 metres. But I applaud the intention of the of the rule. Yep. And that is if you're Watching restricting a player, but he wasn't restricted. Bounce back in the centre. White knocking it in the path of Davey. And he takes off. He's exciting to watch. Could he go all the way? Oh, great chase by McPhee. Forced the error. Bait gathers for the Demons. Goes long to the goal line. And getting back, Kepler Bradley with another mark. And that'll be 50 as well. We're going to have 20 50s, I reckon, today. Dean's fan of it. Dean's fan of it. Well, he's been four already, I think. Look at the chase of McPhee. The bounce didn't help Davies' cause. And then at the other end, Bradley takes the mark. I think the 50 is the uh, rule of the week. Monfries. Caparelli. Long inside the 50. Important bounce to be won. Bolton slaps it in the path of Carroll and Mark Johnson. And the Demon defender hits the boundary line. It's not deliberate. What is that, mate? What is that? Scotty Camperale. I, I, uh, very hard to, uh, to see him in an Essendon jumper. This is the first time I've, uh, I've seen him play for the Bombers and very unusual. So used to seeing him in the, uh, in the Navy Blue. Dunn and Bradley. Still going. Lyndon Dunn. Gaining 20 or 30 metres for his team. Keeping it alive. Robertson to bait. Short for White. Neats going back to the square one on one. White might go over their head. He chooses to do so but kicks it behind. Jimmy Hurd's had his two minute spell and uh, he's ready to come back on. He's got the look in the eye, Scotty, hasn't he? Oh, it's ferocious. I love to see Jimmy Hurd looking like this. Not quite you on Wednesday night as Scott Lucas has it on half back. Although, having said that, Scott kicked three goals and did his job. Here's Monfries. My mail is that two of the uh, power brokers of the Allies, yes. Mel Brown and Neil Curley, have already met. And there's rumours that the coach will be sacked officially this week. Solomon <laughs> to a contest. Joe Watson. And a uh, good chain of handballs. Lighter to love it, Murray to Lucas. Good ball, Reynolds. Just playing a good brand of footy here, the, the uh, Bombers. They're up for the contest, we know. They've got to turn it into 100 minutes of effort. 
And that is the key, Jared, whether they can sustain this for the whole game. But yep. uh, you're spot on. Yep, the start of this game, the Bombers, uh, as we've said previously, are here to play today. Fifth year of senior footy now for Joel Reynolds. Just inside the 50 with the kick. And it's missing to the near side. They're one goal, seven now to Melbourne's 2-2. Two -two. Mark McVay comes for a rest. And replaced by Brent Stannon, who we highlighted in the opener. Come on, Sylvia Ross. Off McDonald. On the rotations continue at uh, length. And Amuse affects the switch. Robertson. Can run the whole length of the ground now, unless he's chased down. And this is what you need in footy. Pressure from behind, and that was a good job there from Mark Johnson. Travis Johnston. With the footy for the Demons. 28 touches on the Queen's birthday, averaging 20 a game for the year. Centering ball here for White. Uze provides the run. Hits it deep. Jamar will have to fly. Heard. Bruce closing. Boundary line wins. You just saw Jamar there. Uh, Essendon have had a little victory there as far as uh, Melbourne's rotations go. They've put Jamar down to full forward to uh, make Kepler Bradley more accountable. Demons deep in attack. Jamar. Byron Pickett waiting for it. Couldn't find an opening. Stood up in the tackle, but Watson retrieves the handball. Peveril, brilliant stuff. Got it to Mark Johnson. Nowhere to go, though. He's going to have to hit it to the centre corridor. And he gets caught. Got the handball to Peveril. Camparelli. Back for Mark Johnson. Reynolds. That's Trey a down, hit. gets a three. will line up for his second. Yeah, Matty Whelan lost the footy, and he just tried to take his man out of the contest. There's a tackle missed by Brad Green on the flank that probably gave them this opportunity. Well, it actually turned out all right for the Bombers because uh, Johnson had nowhere to go. There were three Melbourne players behind the footy. The fact that he got run down allowed players to eventually get into the forward 50, and that's why they got a shot at goal now. So it actually worked in their favour, the fact that he, uh, he did get run down. Time on, opening term, Reynolds kicks his second, Bombers in front. Well, Joel Reynolds played full back about six weeks ago in a uh, much talked about positional move. He does look more comfortable up forward, obviously, and uh, as is often the case these days, for your good work, you get dragged. <laughs> And they're putting a big bloke down there. The captain, David Hill, goes back down onto the ground, which is going to make the matchups a bit of a challenge for uh, the Melbourne coaching box. Have got Johns, Hill and Lucas within 30 metres of the Essendon goal right now, so there are some tall targets there. Watching guys coming up the square. It leaves Paddy Ryder in the ruck here against White. Johnston for McDonald for Bruce. Demons the clearance. Robertson in a little skirmish. Haven't worked it out yet that the Demons are winning plenty of footy in the middle, but up forward, they're just hitting to a blocked area. And Hurd can be so dangerous. Targets Lucas. Good use of the body. Couldn't hang on under the river's pressure. Whelan and Bolton now. Bomber's still going hard. Lucas does well. And he might get a high one. No play on is the call, and Whelan wins the free. Craig Henry in the spotlight. Those fans thought Lucas could have got one. Well, clearly he could have on the replay. And McDonald receives. Well, one line on the freeze. Is it fair to say, Wayne, that the real challenge for coaches these days is to orchestrate space in your forward line? Oh, look, that is the challenge because, uh, as we know, more and more, uh, well, just about every week, players drift back. And that's the strength of the Adelaide Crows. Saw them first-hand Friday night. They get their wings back. They get on balls back into that space. So... That's exactly the key. The space. exuberance of Paddy Ryder driving the Bombers inside 50, but Holland stands tall and waxes with Carroll. Yeah, he's got absolutely nowhere to go. He's going to have to stop or go backwards or just bomb. He stops. He goes sideways to Ward. He goes backwards to Whelan. Now short to White. And they did that in the end as well as they could have. And White says, just settle it down. Russell Robinson's got smart. He's just got out of that crowded forward line. He's pushed up the ground. Oh, oh, oh that's a shank. 
That's Bartram work. Under pressure all of a sudden of their own doing. Carroll, White, and they'll get it clear. Bartram again. Going in the next direction. Hasn't really had a good look so far. Davey from the boundary line, centering it for Jamar. He elects to play on. Goal, and they've mucked it up. They have mucked it up in the goal square. Bruce could not get boot to ball. Many will ask why did Jamar handle it anyway. That makes a coach angry. Here's McPhee. It's reflective of the Melbourne uh, first quarter fortunes at the moment. They're just a shade off the mark. Camparelli through the middle, chipping in the Lucas direction. It could be a two-goal swing just like that. But I guess the point I was trying to make, Cleveland, before with Wayne is that Essendon are pushing their bikes back, blocking up Melbourne's forward line, which and creates space in their own. Which does, and they're getting the ball in so quickly that they're actually being able to use that space. And that was a magnificent kick. Kicks. Scotty Lucas didn't actually lead there, but he saw that Scotty Lucas was in front. He dropped the ball in front of him, which allows uh, Lucas to run onto an uncontested mark. And that's probably, as a defender, that is the hardest kick to defend. The one where a forward uh, falls onto it like that. And we don't often see that either. Scott Lucas miss, missing from there. He's been an ultra-consistent footballer over the last seven or eight years, Scotty Lucas. Probably doesn't get the uh, accolades that he deserves sometimes. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And good of Jared Rivers to give him a bit of goal-kicking advice after the event. <laughs> Especially after kicking two himself, his first two last week. Coming up on a minute remaining in the opening term, the Bombers have wasted some chances here. Two goals, eight. So Melbourne 2-3, although the Demons will argue they blew one a moment ago. This is Bartram. Happy to take some time, goes short, finds bait. His seventh senior game, 19-year-old out of Croydon in Melbourne's East. Well, Jason Johnson has come onto the ground. He was started uh, with a tag from Phil Reed. Reed now on the bench, and Johnson's pushed forward, and he's got Bartram with him. Hasn't had much of the footage, Jason Johnson. Just one kick and one handball. But it looks like he's got a different role. Effin and dragged out of it. Bombers, 15 seconds. Peveril goes short. Welsh. And it looks like they're happy to play for the quarter time siren, which will sound with them in control by five points on the scoreboard. Stant will finish with it. Entertaining opening stanza on Fox Footy Sunday. Yeah, look, the Bombers have definitely come here to play. There's no doubt about that. But you just get the feeling that the Demons, and nothing's gone right for them in this quarter, you get the feeling that they're probably a little bit off. But it only has to turn around that uh, slightest little bit and you just get the feel that the Ds might be able to uh, take it up another level, level Joe. Plenty of upside for Melbourne. Possibly Essendon will rue their inaccuracy in this first quarter. They're wearing the yellow and armbands, defying the AFL. Can they defy the Demons? They lead by five points at quarter time. Couldn't get to all eight games? Then catch the winners for a complete wrap-up of the round. The Winners is your one-stop shop for all the round's best highlights. The Winners, tonight, 7.30 local. Edward in the middle. Look at that. Quite brilliant ball to the driving ball forward. That's a contender. He'll be past the centre. Johnson takes the mark. How's that for a coast-to-coast -coast goal? Charlotte. Good delivery. Your complete AFL Match Day Guide. The facts and stats you need to know, plus the stuff you've always wanted to know. Grab a copy of the new AFL record. At Officeworks, we've got big savings to bank on. Pay $949 for this compact notebook, just $849 after cashback. Microsoft Office 2003 Professional Academic Version is just $235. Officeworks, the works. Davey bounces off the ropes. He's back in. He kicks the ropes. Goal! 
Looking to create the latest looks at home or a great range of modular solution kitchens from as little as $39.90 or for a natural flooring that inspires, we have all your needs covered and a team that delivers. This the Brian Wood. Where the trade go, cause they know. Tuesday night for a man simply known as Mad Dog. It has to be Robbie Muir. Plus a man who is known as the new John Coleman. Alan Noonan from Warrigal. Then join Ron Barassi for some great 1986 moments from the Fox Footy Vault. All part of your legendary Tuesday night lineup right here on Fox Footy. Luke Darcy, footy champion. What a quarter for Luke Darcy. Luke Darcy is a beautiful kick. Darcy! You can catch Luke on Fox League teams as part of Fox Footy's champion team. Full of voice and a good number turning out today as well for a match between 16th and 6th on the AFL ladder heading into it. And it's the bottom of the ladder, Bombers, by five points at quarter time. Joel Reynolds with their two goals. Ball winners shared. Montfries and Reynolds each with seven touches. Melbourne 2 3. Bartram and Robertson, their goal kickers as we head to ground level. And Scott Cummings. Thanks, Clinton. Well, Neil Danaher was a fired-up man there. He's screaming at the boys to get in and go and get the footy, start attacking more. He was not happy with their reactive nature in that first quarter. Essendon players, they came in all together, all fired up, and uh, they've got a good look about them today. The biggest problem for them was they asking their boys to finish off, kick the goals. We're doing the work, let's get the goals. But the big news is there, Jimmy Hurd's run straight into the rooms, and my word is that uh, they are taking a lot of concern about his uh, hamstring. He did come out late there, and he uh, is still right to go, but uh, keep an eye on Jimmy Hurd's hamstring. Shelling right. he'll get him uh, right now and they're working on his uh, lower back there, trying to loosen up those nerves that supplied him. He just tied, he hasn't played for some time. Following us today, a replay of the match, the early match this afternoon in Launceston between Hawthorne and Richmond, so if you don't want to know the progress score, look away now. Essendon wasting their chances in the opening term. 2-8 to 2-3. Stanton had a couple of shots. Have they been able to convert these, Wayne? As you said earlier, they could have enjoyed a three-goal break. Oh, no question about that. And uh, that was uh, one of the misses there. And Scotty Lucas missed, missed one from probably 20-30 out directly in front as well. So will it come back to bite them? Look, their attitude is spot on today. I think they've come here to play. There's no doubt about that. But you have to make the most of your opportunities, and so far they haven't been able to do that. Scott Lucas in particular disappointed with that as Jared Rivers came to offer some friendly advice. Second quarter here on Fox Footy Sunday. Demon forward line there with Robertson alongside of Lovett Murray as we get the term underway with Peveril. Trying to work with Jason Johnson. He's wrapped up. Umpire's willing to let that go this season and eventually it comes out. Solomon wide for Mark Johnson. Ward chasing. McPhee really working hard at the moment. He's uh, had a pretty quiet season compared to his All-Australian year, but he's pushing it today. Camparelli this way, that away. Back for Solomon. Look out. Davey closing, so he 
gets rid of it speedily for Hill. On the lead is Reynolds. Proving a handful there for Whelan as he feeds the hand pass to Heffernan. Bruce read that well. White. Melbourne's only loss since round three. A very commendable effort out west against the Eagles. And as Bolton leaps high over Rivers. Play on the call. Good work, Peveril. He is really going hard at it. Got it to Bolton. Now Jason Johnson. Kicks to half forward. Acrobatically taken by Lucas. No, 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 no. Scotty. Move away. Move away. Move away. Go back. Take your free kick. Yeah, I know you no mention took you over. That's fine. The description from Craig Henry. Interesting view of momentum. <laughs> As Reynolds continues to prove a handful for the Demon defence, he's going to line up for his third goal here. Remember, he had kicked just eight goals prior to today in his five years of senior footy. Off ball, Carroll and Caparelli having a little dance. <laughs> so Reynolds looking to give Essendon an 11-point lead. But the chances continue to go bigger. Holland doesn't want to bring it in, so he just drops it. Bring it in. Johnson off and Matthew Whelan off. Green. Yes. Speculative kick there. For Bruce, boundary throwing. Demons just off their game here to start this second quarter. McFee running with Bruce at the start of this quarter. Barton with Camparelli. Davey with no one. No one can run with Davey, that's why. <laughs> good mark by Welsh. This is a good battle. Welsh uh, well on top at the moment. Byron Pickett, uh, such an influential player for Melbourne, but not involved at the moment. Joe Watson drives to half forward, Demons spoil one another, Scott Lucas gathers drops it into space in the pocket Courtney Johns a wins a free kick and goes against Holland and he'll have it tight on the boundary line left forward pocket, Scott Cummings yeah, a little uh, Jimmy Hurd update uh, he's been doing a couple of run throughs trying to get uh, some movement in that right hamstring he went straight back uh, to the physio Bruce Connor and uh, who put him back on his stomach and he's still working hard on it so uh, a very unconvincing Jimmy Hurd has missed the last month of football as we know. 20 seconds. Courtney John's looking to uh, pass his ball off. Sends it across the face. Bombers do well to keep it in. No, they don't. Yes. Yes. Out of bounds on the full. That was bad luck because that was a that was an inspired knock from Chris Heffernan. He uh, he got it straight to Jason Johnson, who was going to have a shot at goal. Oh. <laughs> Boundary umpire leaning around the behind post there to make the call. Essen and get it regardless. Mark Johnson to the top of the square and Chris Johnson, who replaced Whelan as Jared said, takes a good mark. It's a courageous mark too. It's a beauty. Bombers winning the contested ball here in the second term as Ward runs away from defence. Byron Pickett, his second kick for the game, a beauty for Green. Hits the ground running, drives it long, Robertson in front, goes to ground. Lovett Murray doing the job on him so far. The handball for Camparelli, back for the running Lovett Murray. And a sea of demons, Bradley for McVeigh. Out wide, Lovett Murray again. Five minutes have gone by, quarter number two. He kicks down the line. McPhee's in front of Bruce. Okay. 2-9, plays 2-3. McPhee goes back to Welsh. As a missed the game key. this year. And that's the key for McPhee. He's playing on uh, Cameron Bruce. He's been given the job now to do that. But uh, you have to work hard and you have to make sure... You get possessions as well, and that's exactly what he's doing. Kepler Bradley. 
Getting some of the footy today. Oh, oh that's oh. with courage. Robertson going back into the unknown. And he'll get the handball from Chris Johnson. That might lift the demons. McDonald going for Carroll. Hey, Scotty, hold there. Jimmy Heard's uh, going back on shortly. He's ready to go. He's Shut convinced him he's right. And uh, he's right to go. Thanks, Scott. Moving David on. needs a while between touches. Just Play one on. kick today for the Demon skipper. As McDonald's short for picket, it travels the required 15. One of those umpires has a flip <laughs> problem right now. I think he might have. And why Melbourne are doing this is because there is just really nowhere to go. They can't break the line. They've just got to chip it sideways or 10 metre kicks or 15 metre kicks, obviously. And they're just slowly edging their way up. That trend continues here. Uze now into the pocket. Solomon wrapped up. McPhee. Now yeah, there'll be some space in their forward line here. If they can move it through this part of the ground. Mike Johnson to Watson to Wells. Takes it strongly. Looking for a runner. Watson provides it. Keep it moving. Kicks long. Lucas the target. Gets rid of Carroll. Takes the mark. Thinks about a shot. Goal square's unguarded. Lucas bombs it long. And gets it! A reward for their effort. And Essendon lead by two goals. Yeah, you just get the feeling that uh, the Bombers are playing on at all costs. They get the ball across half-back. I think Kevin Sheedy's said to them, we have nothing to lose. Yep. And uh, they're, based, they're, they're running the footy. And it doesn't matter whether they mark the ball on half-back, full-back, centre wing. They play on. They're trying to use the ball. They're trying to create something. At times it doesn't work. Yep. But they're playing inspired football at the moment. Scotty Welsh again involved, as was Joe Watson. But you can see they weren't waiting to see where the option was before they kicked it. They were running and then looking for the option. That's exactly right. Getting it in quick, as you said, and the pressure right now on the Demons. Two goals is Essendon's lead as Bruce shoveling it out wide. Oh, good hands. We on. Neats. Advantage play on. Neats to Robertson. And with Big Jamar down in the goal square, they've got the capacity to push David Neats up the ground, as we saw there, here. And they still have a target down deep in the goal square, or the, the leading target in Russell Robinson. Now, at his best, Russell Robinson buries these. He's uh, a very accurate kick normally. Not today. One goal, one, his return. Now the Demons are going to be manning up Essendon Huddle up, so they should get someone clear. And Bradley, who spent much of his junior career as a wingman, has some toe for a big man, gets free. His kick is very wide, but effective. Running onto it, Henry Slattery. Precise. Now Bradley pops it up to the middle. Hill and White waiting over the top. Bruce locks in the crumbs. Solomon under pressure takes them on. McPhee rides one bump, tackles Neves. Uze squeezing it forward. Essendon with the numbers. Peverell elects to go himself now. The handle wide. That's okay. Watson left time. Wants to get it to half forward. Bolton is there. Couldn't hang on to it. Second effort, good. Brought down though, Carroll, good chase. Neeks put the heavy bump on Watson. High ball. Free kick on the wing. Melbourne's. James McDonald, your kick. Against Bond. Not too sure about that one. I think the umpires would be pretty keen to uh, let everyone know they're not too wrap when big bodies go in around the head. Nate, with now 33 players in Melbourne's attacking half of the ground. McDonald, the only player 
behind McDonald at this point is in the centre corridor. There's Lucas and Rivers, as you see at the top of the screen. Everyone else in this half. The difference is, though, Clinton, I reckon Neil Danner and Lucas say, well, who's working to make the space for Melbourne? They're just sitting there, most of the Melbourne players, happy to be involved in this flood. They've got to just push out, make some space. McPhee elected to go for the spoil, and it's a boundary throw in. It's stagnant, Wayne. Yeah, just didn't have an awareness there, uh, McPhee. was actually on his own, could have taken a, an easy mark by himself, but no talk. Camparelli, the hand pass out, going nowhere in a hurry. Shades of last night here as Australia down England in the second of the Cook Cup tests. Martin Ellis, Craig Henry and Chris Camelins, the men in charge. Melbourne with just one behind this quarter so far as Slattery runs onto it. Falls to Davey and now Ward who thumps it long to the pocket. Done in front of Bradley, almost does well to get the handle for Robertson. Gets away from Lovett Murray and kicks his second goal. And occasionally that's the best way to do it. Bum it long as Ward did. And let's see what happens. That's where we need to pay more attention to goal assist because uh, Russell Robertson was on the end of it. But just uh, have a look how it happens. Byron Pickett, great tackle. Aaron Davey spreads it, the, uh, the ball. Ward goes to the fat side with a mongrel, but have a look at this. Lyndon Dunn just controls it with the one hand, then with awareness, pops it over the top. That's what created the goal, and in some ways, he should be the one acknowledged for kicking it. One of your favourite Joe the Goose is flying. That was a bit of a Joe the Goose, wasn't it? 3-9 plays, 3-4. Pebrel overruns it. Whelan for McDonald. The game's leading ball winner kicks long again in front. Sylvia. He'll have a shot from 40 metres out with his first kick of the game to try and put Melbourne back in front. Yeah, you just get the feel that uh, Melbourne not playing all that well, but you just got the feeling that there's another gear to go for them and uh, just starting to make the most of their opportunities. Three goals, nine. You look at it now, and it's uh, that's the figure that could haunt Essendon, who have been dominant, but Melbourne hanging on. And Sylvia puts them in front. Two in two minutes, wrestles Melbourne back the lead. Some grim looks in the bomber coaching box. And Melbourne have been a very good side this year, very consistent, very even team performances week after week, and just get the feeling that they uh, they realise they're a bit flat here and in the last couple of minutes you just get the feel that uh, they might take it up a level. Well they're a genuine top four side and they're playing against the bottom side so there's clearly a it's disparity in performance and I think the belief is there with Melbourne. You'd expect them to, uh, to get out of it but the way that Essendon started I think there'll be a lot of people still hopeful that they can uh, pull off a great upset. Hill, the long handball in the path of Monfries and Ward. Both go to ground. Byron Pickett at half back. Oh, crash! Straight into McPhee. And the Demons are away. Whelan. There is none better if he... <laughs> his timing is impeccable. This place has been good other than getting dragged down. And Mark Johnson is rewarded. Now Essendon look to run. Hurd calling for it in the middle. Gets it. Hill... Could go all the way, elects to go short, and Lucas and Johns just run into each other's space. They might get it regardless. Monfries to Camperiali, goes to the goal square, but Rivers is back there and takes the mark. Well, that's a challenge, I think, for Essen, or not? I, don't, I think history shows you that uh, two big full forwards rarely work for a long period of time. And Johns and Lucas just instinctively went to the same spot. Chris Johnson, Cameron Bruce, keeping it low, spearing it at the chest of Neitz, he couldn't hang on to it. Davey now, oh how did he do that? He just couldn't get the finish. 
Well, it has been known to work occasionally in a state game. There was a famous one, uh, I think Lockett, Dunstall and Ablett actually playing in the same side. But over an extended period of time, I'm not sure uh, history would throw up any combination that has worked. I think those three might be the exception, Jared. <laughs> I think that'd work anywhere. Ball was coming down pretty freely <laughs> that day as well. Labor intensive build up here for the Bombers, but they give it to Lovett Murray. A bounce on the wing, kick to Monfries over his head. Paddles it back in. Great battle with Ward. Monfries wins this one, but his kick is out of bounds. Scott Cummings, how would you feel with another big man leading into your space in the forward line? Well, well someone needs to get a spray, don't they? And uh, it's nothing personal, but uh, if they're going to get in the way, no good. Then give them a serve. They're just not caring and sharing people for four. They are. They're not built that way. It's all about us. <laughs> another 50, this time against Hefferton. And Jeff White has it on half back. Two point lead for Melbourne, 4 5 to 3 9. Here on Fox Footy Sunday, as Byron Pickett receives. Goes to the centre corridor. Bombers getting back. This is Chris Johnson. Out wide. Uze about to be collected. At the back, Monfries getting plenty of it here. Ten possessions already. Goes for her. McPhee. Back for her. A little scrappy. Back for McPhee. Johns. Again, the Ward and Monfrey show continues. Holland with the pickup. Whelan. Bartram. Great balance on the outer wing. Off a of bounce. Long to half forward. Solomon in front. Meets at the back. Sylvia. Paddling it for the skipper. He's brought down. Took two of them though. Davy lurking dangerously. Bolton gets there for Essendon. Bomber defence holding up. He's heard. They've lost their run, the Bombers. Oh, boy. Peveril's kick has been stolen by Robertson. And his third goal should be merely academic. In the first quarter, the Bombers were going up and down the ground. Goal to goal. Now they're going sideways because Melbourne's pressure's gone up, which has put immense... Uh, pressure on their disposal and we get incidents like this which will embarrass them. Robertson gets his third. Melbourne have kicked three in a row. Yeah, that's what we spoke about at the start of the game, Jared. We said that uh, the Bombers off obviously got off to a great start. They've uh, been very inaccurate. Could have put a lot more scoreboard yeah. pressure on Melbourne, but the fact of the matter is, when you play this brand of footy, can you sustain it for the whole game? And at this point in time, you'd have to say that the Bombers have, uh, have started to lapse in that area. Maybe this is the day Russell Robertson will break out three already, just 19 to the halfway mark of the there season. Goes. Remember, he kicked 73 last year, finishing with a rush, including seven in round 20. So perhaps he's on his way today. As Jamar palms it down. Bombers have got to get the next one now. Peveril the handball away. Chris Johnson going to ground. Heard. The Jason Johnson, now Welsh. Out for Mark Johnson. This looks better. Monfrey's in space. Can he get it? He can. And we'll go back and have a shot from 45 out at right half forward. He has been impressive here today, Angus Monfrey's. He's been a good player for the Bombers this year. South Australian boy. Captain the under-18s South Australian side a few years ago. And has been accurate. 12 goals, 5 for the season. His team needs it. And the inaccuracy of Essendon continues. Three goals, ten. Well, they haven't gone into their forward 50 too often in this quarter. It's really been a quarter dominated by Melbourne, but those are the misses that will come back to haunt you. As you said, Clinton, three goals, ten. Green pleading for someone to present. 
Jaima does. Now Travis Johnston. Short. Effective. Finds Reed. To the centre corridor. Now Bruce. Here's the long ball. Robertson in front. Methodical build up there by the Demons. And now Robbo's looking at his fourth. No, it was a smart kick. He just knew Robertson had the space and he put it into the space and let Robertson run onto it. He's missed one from a similar angle this quarter. Let's see if he's uh, rectified the issue. Overcorrected, Clinton. <laughs> Always happens, doesn't it? Four minutes from half time, Melbourne by eight points as they search to make it eight wins from their last oh, nine geez. starts. Some dangerous kicking by Essendon. And the turnovers are mounting as Green steals this one. Too far out to score, goes short for Travis Johnston. And he's paid the mark, leaping over Peveril. Well, just pure athleticism won him uh, the day there. Kepler Bradley, he's got lots of work to do with his disposal. Everyone at Essendon would know that, and uh, that he'd be working on it pretty hard, but just pulled it, and uh, it's a couple of times now he's given the wonky ball out. But that's just vertical leap at its best. Johnston missing to the same side that Robertson did. Scott Cummings, no breeze down there? Uh, no, not a lot, mate. It's a bit chilly. That might be hurting them, but there's uh, no breeze at all. 5-7 plays, 3-10 as Lovett Murray takes off. Goes long. Bradley the target. Read it well. Now McPhee receives the slattery kick. Lucas waiting for it. Question for you, Wayne. What's, what's stopped the Essendon run? Is it Melbourne's defence or is it they haven't got enough runners to sustain the effort? I just think the Demons have uh, had their hands on the ball to a lot more than a uh, lot more than the Bombers this quarter. But the one thing, uh, I definitely think the run has, has dried up. But the fact of the matter is they're not getting their hands on it as often as the Demons at this stage. Solomon long to the goal square. Off the ground, Heffernan! Jeez, this is an interesting one. No. I was on side Where I was, I did not see a touch where I was. Did you come in, Glenn? Oh, here we go. <laughs> Just stay clear. We're going to go. I'm not convinced it's a goal. No, I can't say it either. I didn't see whether it was touched. We're not convinced we've got to go the lesser. That's the instruction. So we go behind. Chris Camelins, the umpire. If they're not sure, they have to go the lesser score. In this case, a behind. Let's look at the replay. Heffernan's boot. Goal. A goal. Well, you can send it on upstairs to the video review, Wayne, and we could have cleared that up for them in 10 seconds as opposed to a discussion down there. Do we need a video review? Oh, look, I, uh, I think we have to. I think we have to because there, was, there is going to be a decision at some stage in our game that is going to cost a side a preliminary final or a grand final win, and we just... We, we, do, we just don't need that. And as you said, that took 20 seconds. We could have done it in 10. Mark Johnson sends it wide. Essendon is still building, though. Down to less than two minutes from half time. Whelan certainly got the first touch on it, but it did appear as though the last touch was the boot of Heffernan. It's hard to see how the umpire, though, would have been unsighted. <laughs> well, he had, the, he had the best view in the house. He's five metres away, directly in front of him. There's the payback. Monfries had his side up. And now he's drawn the Bombers to within two points. We've got to get another look at it. In fact, we can now. And I don't think there's any doubt that Whelan got a hand on it and gave it a little bit of uh, help along the line. But I think in, in, in the end it was uh, Heffernan's boot that... I don't know about that. And... Applause. Even video can be inconclusive well, at times, although on that angle... Yeah, I reckon the boot's behind yeah. the hand. You're right about the umpire being outside it. That's a goal. I don't reckon it is. 
<laughs> I reckon that's Wheeler. <laughs> We've got the in <laughs> the indisputable yeah. video. Good decision. I'm I think you, can, you can say it's indisputably inconclusive. Uh, that's why the uh, video will never come in. <laughs> no, never. Get rid of it. What a silly suggestion. Here's Carroll clearing out a defence. Game on now. Target is Bruce on the other side, and it's over for a boundary throw-in. Great work by our Fox Footy Sunday videotape team there, providing the angles. I reckon we might have another look at it. As <laughs> as well. I was say, that is definitely a goal. Definitely, and, definitely. And Jeff, it's rather definitely a point. Well, nothing definite. Looked like the hand uh, was the one that propelled it, though. Where is Maradona? Kick goes towards half full. Bradley. Solomon. Can Essendon get a late one and seize back the lead at half time? Important ball on the wing, less than a minute to go. Lucas drives to half forward. They can build here. Wells, he could go all the way. Elects to kick quickly. Top of the square, Monfries. Oh, Ward, great spoil. Waiting down though. Here's a go. Stanton to put Essendon in front. He's missed it. Did everything right. It was a great burst by the Demon, uh, by uh, the Bombers. And that one was a point. <laughs> no doubt about it. They've had some easy opportunities. We saw Heffernan uh, miss a goal similar to that one in the first quarter. The Bombers should be in front. Bad kicking is bad football. 4-12 to 5-7. And I'm sure you told your team after they lost the shootout that on Wednesday night. <laughs> it cost them the game. Here's Reed. Derek Kicker. Don't know why Scott didn't take one. That was a bold call of yours. Reed near the boundary line, over, stopped the clock at seven seconds. So Scotty was actually meant to take the last kick. Physically incapable. <laughs> One point game. Is there time for a clearance, a kick and a mark? No. This game is very much alive. And a great game of footy to watch. Uh, fantastic that Essendon have produced some of their best footy for uh, a fair while. James Heard back. No doubt uh, inspiring some of his charges, but uh, a couple of other younger kids into the side. And Melbourne quality outfit. Uh, Chris Johnson, I thought, was a good move. There he is. And Bartram's also had a pretty good outing. Uh, lots of youth, lots of run in this Melbourne side. And uh, if the Bombers are to prevail, they're going to have to go back and find some more run. That's what uh, made them competitive early. 5-7 plays 4-12 as the Bombers search to end this 10-game losing run. Lots to talk about here on Fox Footy Sunday. We're at halftime. It's the Demons leading by a point. Monday, get the latest from Clinton Spider and the Ox on White Line Fever at 7.30. Then... Boy, takes off boss. They wrote him off, but now Lion King Michael Voss is back to his best and on the couch. Voss! Brilliant! 7.30, White Line Fever. 8.30 on the couch, live and exclusive, Monday. Wife called. Oh. She seems nice. Fun meets functionality with a new Motorola Razr V3X. Hello, Moto. Yeah, we got a tool shop here. It's, it's pretty good in there. Um, I go in there sometimes to grab a tape measure or something. Spend 15 minutes walking around thinking about the things I wouldn't mind picking up when I get paid. Bosch Lithium Ion Cordless Driver, $66. Outdoor Bistro Blinds, $125. GMC 1800 Watt Electric Chainsaw, $99. 12 Rail Clothes Era, $690. If you happen to find a cheaper price on a stock item, we'll beat it by 10%. Pretty hard to come in and not see something that you know. Bunnings Warehouse! Lowest prices are just the beginning. Honors the lead from Robinson. WrestleMania is back. Harley Norman's ripping back prices in our big half yearly clearance. Buy now and save with 19 months. No deposit, no interest, no repayments till January 2008. Electrical computers, furniture and bedding. We are ripping back prices to clear the lot. Huge reductions on overstocks and run out lines. With 19 months, no deposit, no interest, no repayments till January 2008. What a deal. Massive savings and 19 months interest free. Rip into Harvey Norman's big half yearly clearance and save. On now. Go. 
Subscribe to Ringtone King and get rid of that annoying SMS forever for the Gunners classic. Text Gold 41. Juan Hendricks and Foxy Lady. Text Gold 42. Or text Gold 43 for Body Rockers. Or for... Get Dr. Dre by texting Gold 44. And finally, for Sweet Home Alabama... Text Gold 45 and send to 191818. I'd like you to get out of here. <laughs> Have a little bit of a look at that. I called you a little quick boy. I'd like you to get out of here. <laughs> Central Rewind, Wednesday on Fox Footy Channel. Spider Everett, Footy Champion. And that's Everett, that's what we want to see from Spider. Wheeling around quickly. Good kick. You can catch Spider on White Line Fever and the Gospel as part of Fox Footy's Champion Team. <laughs> Time at the Telstra Dome on Fox Footy Sunday, and it's a point the difference between the inform Melbourne and the before this out of form Essendon. 5 7 37, the Demons, the Bombers, 4 12 36, Reynolds with two goals for the Bombers, Robertson with three for Melbourne, Kepler Bradley, the game's leading ball winner with 14 possessions down in the back half. Clinton, Jared and Wayne with you at halftime and we haven't stopped debating during the course of the halftime break. Was it a goal or was it a behind to Chris Heffernan? Jared is adamant that it was a behind. Wayne is adamant it's a goal. I'd say on the balance of probabilities, I reckon his boot grazed that ball on the way through. Well, I would have said it was inconclusive. There's no question. I think Whelan, Whelan is... Uh, and he's hit it first. He's hit it first and then I think it's gone onto the boot. And I would say, uh, I would say that's a goal. And one thing about the video, and as we know, and having gone to the tribunal on the odd occasion, <laughs> Lansing blows as uh, as that was on his boot can often look like it misses, but it yeah. actually connects. But you actually can't tell from that definitively that he's hit it. Not a hundred percent. So the benefit of the doubt goes with the umpire, as you said. And that's and and that's probably where I will agree with you. And they probably, in, in saying that, you'd have to say that they've made the right decision. So pats on the on back to the evidence. men in charge. Let's have a look at the highlights of this match. It started hot, and it was on early in Essendon, backing up the pre-game declaration that they were here to play. But they wasted some chances up forward. They did lead 2-8 to 2-3 at quarter time. Joel Reynolds went forward, kicked a couple of goals for them. Yeah, they were hot uh, early, the Bombers. Impressive too, and Kevin Sheedy will say, well, okay, fellas, you play like that for uh, 30 minutes. What happened in the second half of the second quarter? He'll want the same drive and the same intensity in the uh, second half. The difference of was, of course, Wayne Melbourne lifted. Yeah, no question about that, uh, as we've said. Court, but the Bombers got off to a great start. But, look, I, I honestly think that... Uh, I thought that at the start of that second quarter, the Demons looked like they were going to take over this game, but... The Bombers were, uh, were ultra impressive in the, how they uh, they stayed in the game, and really the Bombers should have gone in at half time up. They've uh, missed some very easy goals. Heffernan missed an easy snap in the first quarter. I think we saw Monfrey's uh, miss an easy goal in that second quarter. And, and look, they're goals that you have to kick if you're to win these types of games. Although you just get the feeling that the Demons have got another gear. Mm -hmm. So does that make Kevin Sheedy worried to a degree that they haven't converted on these chances? They've given it their best shot, and Melbourne does have another level to go to. Well, look. Uh, when you when you're down, the confidence uh, the confidence isn't there, and uh, you'd have to say that the bombers, who uh, aren't exactly high on confidence at the moment, need to nail those opportunities because the demons, as we know, are a very good side, and they will make you pay. So um, it's going to be an interesting half. Can the bombers uh, can the bombers go on with it in the second half? That's the big question because uh, they've used a lot of their run in that first half. So we're looking to get some more uh, touches out of Jason Johnson. He hasn't had a great year, but he's been restricted again to uh, just the five possessions, a couple of kicks, and a couple of hand, but three handballs. McVeigh also he's doing a tagging job, but uh, hasn't had much of the footy. Heffernan's had eight touches. I mean, it's tough when you've got a uh, primarily a tagging role to uh, get some drive, but Jason Johnson is the one age rater that they need to really find his very best form right now. That was Russell Robertson converting on the Bombers' defensive half error. That's his third goal, that. but then late in time onto the second term, Angus Monfries, who's had a bit of the footy here, 
12 possessions in the first half, six marks, and, well, after the heffin and goal that wasn't. Goal. <laughs> it's hard to see how that umpire was actually unsighted. I mean, that uh, still remains mm. uh, a question I'm sure they'll look at during the week because he was right in the spot, maybe just like us. It was so difficult to tell. Mm. See, that angle would appear to indicate that ball came out with a bit of force, hence the boot theory. Yeah, the, uh, He's a very strong man, Matthew Wheeler. A little back flick, as you well know, Wayne. You were famous for the backhander. <laughs> no question that uh, Whelan got a hand on it, but uh, I think it uh, went from hand to foot. And here's Montfries, who took the mark and had a sign up from a similar location earlier in the second quarter. And this one, with just a couple of minutes to go, was good. And at half-time... We've got a one-point game. Melbourne at 5-7, the Bombers 4-12. We'll come back and talk more about it right after this here on Fox Footy Sunday. Wednesday on Headliners. It's late 82. Tommy's been sacked and the new board is already divided. Incredibly, appointing two coaches on the same day. Really, we fell apart day one. I just thought to myself, we're all over the place. We are not haven't got any direction. The big names headline a $1.8 million signing frenzy. We built this wall with uh, Richmond in that we poached their players, they poached ours. They are desperate and they were going to do whatever it took to actually win that flag. The new Magpies, Wednesday, exclusive to Headliners. The 2006 footy season is hotting up. Subscribe to Ringtone King Clubs and get your team's anthem on your mobile. For example, text footy18 for the Mighty Lions anthem. Or for the Maggies, text footy20 to 191818. How's about footy27 for the Power Anthem? Or text footy30 for the Swannies. It's easy. Just text footy and your favourite team's number to 191818 and show your support to the flame and end. Imagine you scored tickets to the soccer finals. Your friends wonder who you'll take. Even your boss is looking for an invite. Then you see his Samsung LCD HD TV. It's stunning. The design is brilliant. Your decision suddenly becomes clear. When you tell your friends you gave your tickets away, they think you're crazy. But when they see you got a new Samsung LCD TV with built-in high-definition tuner, they think you're a genius. With a beautifully designed Samsung LCD HD TV, it's not that hard to imagine. Love it. Can he pick it up and again get the banana working? Oh, that's oh right. have a look at this boy. Don't tell me. Phenomenal. Rebel Sport, your World Cup destination. Watch your heads, guys. Yeah. I wish we had a bigger car. Ah! <laughs> oh, hi. I am a GE Money Genie, and I can help. Because with a GE Money personal loan, you can have the four-wheel drive you've been wishing for. Our personal loans start at just 8.74% per annum. And you can apply in the blink. Oh, 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 oh. Have you lost weight? Me? <laughs> you know I could do that. Fighting machines. No. Oh dear. Oh look, look at that. Oh, now they're arm wrestling. Could you separate them? Hurry! My backside itches. Robots. Showtime premiere Sunday, July 2. Last week on The Gospel, Hollywood making a blockbuster about the AFL. Jet Lee could play Peter Bell. <laughs> Jeff Kennett could be Elf. <laughs> Brian Taylor, Demir Dockage. Tazzy could play Brownie. Blaine Bob, Blaine! <laughs> That's The Gospel on Fox Footy Channel. This game doesn't end up with less than a one-goal margin. We're still arguing about it, but we'll move on with Melbourne leading by a point here at halftime. Time for our Toyota talking tactics, as always. And early for the Bombers, the drive being provided. Heard and McPhee getting a lot of possessions down back. They were. They worked off the, the half-forward line from the middle. We know James Heard started up forward, but uh, really impressed with Adam McPhee's uh, first quarter and a half. He dropped off a little bit late, but uh, he was on fire. He gave away a 50 for that one, but uh, they were blocking the ball up. James Hurst started in the forward pocket, pushed in deep, 
read the ball well, and they rebounded it so well. He's had a couple of different roles, uh, McPhee. He's actually uh, gone to Cameron Bruce at different times. But what I've, uh, what I've liked about his game today, he went on ball, he's shown that he wa- he's here to play, and uh, you just get the feeling that he wants to lift this side. He needs, he wants a win, as does the Essendon Footy Club. And what, and what about the Demons' forward line structure? A little bit of a, a change during the course of the first half? Well, I think they've got two or three uh, game plans now up forward because they, they push R- Russell Robertson right up the ground in that second term and open up some space behind. He went up there in the uh, first term as well, but uh, not to as great an effect. Aaron Davey, there's the space that uh, we're talking about that they created in that uh, second term, but uh, they just got the ball in so much more quickly, and whether or not that was because Essendon dropped off or Melbourne lifted, it was probably a combination of both, but... Uh, it was a much better looking Melbourne in that uh, last 10 minutes of that quarter. They lead by a point at half time. It's 5 7 to 4 goals, 12. Bounce the ball for the second half coming up next at the Telstra Dome here on Fox Footy Sunday. When the final siren sounds, Fox Footy's week is just getting started. All the highlights with the winners tonight. Talk back and insight on White Line Fever weeknights. They are back in a big way. Footy's must-see hour of TV on the couch Monday. If this was two years ago, people would be screaming for Bomber Thompson's head right now. Full team lists first on Fox League Teams Thursdays. It's not good enough. Okay, go. More of the exclusive programs you love this week on Fox Footy Channel. They know that we've got enough stock here and enough variety of stock to allow them to get the right thing for the right job. Yates 25 kilo dynamic lifter, only $16.98. DeWalt 100 mil heavy duty angle grinder, $98. Jumbuck silver patio heater, $199. 4 litre British ultra flat paint, $49.80. Gutter guards, two for just $4. You know you're going to find the right thing you're looking for. Bunnings Warehouse! Lowest prices are just the beginning. I know I've got a choice, but I'm happy. I'm happy because I'm with Host Plus. Host Plus is an industry super fund that's run only to profit members. Members get all the profits because Host Plus doesn't pay financial advisors commissions. No commissions means low fees and higher than average returns. Higher than average returns means I can get even more in the end. In the end, if I can get more, my choice is pretty clear. Goes long, John Cole! Oh, and he marked it! Oh, yeah. Harley Norman's ripping back prices in our big half yearly clearance. Buy now and save with 19 months, no deposit, no interest, no repayments till January 2008. Electrical computers, furniture, and bedding. We are ripping back prices to clear the lot. Huge reductions on overstocks and run out lines. With 19 months, no deposit, no interest, no repayments till January 2008. What a deal! Massive savings and 19 months interest free. Rip into Harvey Norman's big half yearly clearance and save on now. These guys look like they need a bit of a lift to keep them going, so I've prepared a little something with a few things I found around the place. So we've got some prawns on the go in here. Where'd that bait get to, Pete? Put down the sun to thaw out yesterday. Actually, the best way to fill blokes up is with a bit of this. Let's just let go of that. Campbell's, the experts in soup. Mmm, that is, you know, good. Just don't touch that. How's the fishing? Still nothing? Thursday on Fox League Teams. Join Footy's esteemed pal of all stars for the latest team lineups and brutally honest football analysis. Now he's a centre play his own game and doesn't care about his opponent anymore. It's not that hard to go one on one. No one's listening. <laughs> They're listening. <laughs> Fox League Teams, live Thursday on Fox Footy Channel. Scotty, come oh, Scotty, I don't know whether you can hear us out there. Scotty, have you just done a hammy? Uh, I've done something. <laughs> <laughs> the only goal of the night scored by Scotty Cummings, so here he's going to have a ping at him from outside of the arc. This it's is a nine point pointer. Pointer. Too far for you, Scotty. Oh, oh. Have a listen, he's just kicked the air out of the ball it. and it's gone right oh. through the middle. Scotty Cummings with a nine yeah. pointer. Oh. Was he? Good on you. A pure athletic specimen. Oh, it's good. The finest of which we've rarely seen. Scott Cummings is back on 
Hello, Turf. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Clinton. And the best news is no one's tripped over the, uh, my hamstring that I left out there on Wednesday <laughs> night, so uh, good news for all there. Uh, it's dropped a couple of degrees in here. It's nice and fresh, so the boys are going to have to get uh, fired up to get going again after half time. The good news is, and this will upset you, Clinton, a little bit of blue sky oh. going on up here, but uh, if you're not happy with the blue sky, wait half an hour, that'll disappear. Uh, Jimmy Heard uh, led the boys... Uh, vocally at uh, leading into the change rooms here and uh, they were flying. They're pretty happy but they've got to kick their goals and that's the one thing that they're focusing on. Melbourne more disappointed with themselves so I expect them to come out firing too in this uh, second half. All right, Scott, thanks for that. As the Bombers return, we're going to check in on the score of the match at Launceston. Hawthorne against Richmond. Replay immediately following us here on Fox Footy Sunday. So if you don't want to know a progress score, look away now. Here at the Dome, the Bombers will be looking to start the third quarter as they began the second term, as they ran it from one end of the ground to the other. An old coast-to-coast -coast play, which finished with a Scott Lucas goal. And it'll set up from some good work at the defensive end. And at this point, Essendon were out by 12 points when Lucas capped this good run. Yeah, brought down the uh, outer side pretty well. Scotty Welsh, he's had a good game. And uh, he's making right decisions. Joe Watson also... Yes, the footy, pretty good. And uh, it was made excellent by the body use of Scott Lucas there. Dean Solomon is another one, uh, Wayne, that uh, was questionable as to his placement, but that was the big goal. No, he's done a pretty good job, uh, Dean Solomon, in his 150th game. Yep, going well. On David Neitz. Uh, often uh, plays out of his weight division which uh, which he is again today uh, gets given some big jobs on uh, players that are a lot uh, a lot heavier than what he is and uh, doing a very very good job today Melbourne 7 and 4 win loss record coming in remember last year they were 9 and 3 after 12 lost the next 7 they lost their last 5 the year before that said Cameron Bruce this week that's been a trap we've probably fallen into, maybe looking a little too far ahead or worrying about what we've done. He promised it wouldn't happen this year. Well, they're against a team that's lost 10 in a row. Their lead, a tenuous one point as we're about to start the second half. James Heard gone to the goal square. Uh, David Neitz has received the other end with Solomon and uh, Jeffrey White on screen up against the captain of the Bombers. And Aaron Davey playing the loose man in defence for the Demons. Bombers to the right, Demons to the left. Underway in the third term with White winning it down. McPhee though sharks it for Essendon. Drives quickly towards Hurd. Had to beat a couple. Still alive in the race. Bartram, look out. Stanton caught Davey. Doing it at both ends. I think we saw there why he's going to be great at that role and also why he may not be perfect. In the air, it's not his go. He's just got to stay on the ground and let Carroll go for those big thumps. Here's Whelan. 5-7 playing four goals, 12. The 202nd meeting between these old rivals. The Bombers winning 123 of them as Carroll marks in the defensive zone. Well, we get it back again, Aaron Dovey. He's just uh, going to be tough to stop. Carroll flares it wide for McDonald. Getting plenty of it this year, averaging 21 touches a game. This will be 14 already this afternoon as he chips it to the wing. Going to land in space. Rivers tries to keep it in but cannot. Boundary throwing. He's had a very good year, James McDonald. Normally gets given the, the big job of playing on the uh, opposition's best on baller, but he's been getting plenty of the ball. And as they say, if the ball's in your hands, it's not in your opponent's. And uh, that's what he's been doing this year. Good tackle there from Travis Johnson. And there's a holding the ball call. Brought it in under you. Back to Travis Johnson, please. And that would probably be the most frustrating thing in footy right now. Players uh, going for the footy, making the ball their objective and then getting pinged. Didn't really have much of an opportunity to get rid of that one, McPhee. Robertson on the lead. Love it, Murray the spoil. Heard quick hands. Now Welsh. The same tactic, uh, Clinton. Heard starting forward, playing back. Cameron Bruce picking him up. Solomon. No scorers yet in the third quarter. Stay there, Martin. Stay there. Slattery waiting. Goes to Jason Johnson in the centre corridor. Good ball. 
Solomon peeling off Neitz. The handball didn't hit him though. Still going Solomon. Caught by McDonald. Reynolds. Courtney Johns. Deep to the forward pocket. Monfries helped out of it by Whelan who does well. Travis Johnston. White. The run again provided by Johnston. And a poor kick as Bradley gets back. With Bradley over there, it's left Meets. One out the forward line. And Robertson leading wide. Boundary throw in. Just watching uh, James Hurd and Jason Johnson, they, uh, or Mark Johnson, sorry, they uh, basically doing what they want to do. They're sitting out on this wing. James Hurd's getting behind the ball. On that occasion, as you said, Meach was by himself, and uh, I don't think James is going to go to him either if it uh, had have come in there too quickly. Advantage on that whistle. Slattery. Look out, Heffern and Davy lurking still. Hill. McDonald caught. Jason Johnson the tackle. Green drives it deep. Heard the loose man should mark. Can't. Neats, Hurd knocking it away, Bombers have got a hold up, good tackle by Dunn, Robertson tries the soccer attempt and will get a behind out of it. And he'll play straight on James Hurd but you can just see that he's uh, limited in his athleticism at the moment can't you? There's no question about that, even uh, going for that ball there didn't, well it only just went over the line but looks as if James uh, isn't fully fit to me. Davey affects the spoil on Bolton and then tackles Bolton who has to knock it wide. Opens the door for Melbourne, the running Travis Johnston. Turnover. Handball taken by Slattery. Now Welsh. Jason Johnson. Runner gone out to Hurd and there's a physio in the pocket, I think. Uh, about to get near him as well. Long ball. Heffernan inside the 50. Johns wrapped up by Holland. Ben Holland getting a. We're doing a good defensive job three weeks in a row and now winning a free kick. Holland is away, goes short, and this is McDonald. Travis Johnston. Stay down here on the mark. On the side, Adam. Back a minute, thanks. No close on the side. There's a physio loitering on the half forward flank. I think it's a bomber physio, but I thought he was going to James Hurd. Maybe he's trying to get the Bradley as Melbourne go forward and Neitz marks. Good lead by Neitz. He had to trouble the scorers today. This will be just his third kick, but it could give Melbourne an eight point lead at the other end of the ground. Here's the whistle Courtney Johns ping for holding the ball, or at least not knocking it out, or attempting to. And then Green delivering to Neitz on the lead. And now he's kick at goal. He's like a man who's having his just his third kick of the afternoon. The behind. The margin is three points. Bombers into play quickly to the outer side and McPhee. And that physio with finally found his target. He is going to Kepler Bradley. In fact, he's not doing any physio, he's just a second runner. <laughs> That's what he was up there. <laughs> Helping Barnsley out. Stanton's kick was touched. This is Johnston. Chased by Slattery. Good chase too. And it's over for a throw in. Either that, no, he's got the thumbs up the dock, so maybe he was just finding out whether Kepler was okay. Still plenty of heat in this fixture this afternoon. Hill and White. Mark Johnson. Dragged out of it. Bang, crash. Hill and Bruce collide. Bolton takes it. Good hands. Got it to McPhee. Stanton can run. Field opens up for him. Two bounces. Got to go now. Kicks to full forward. One on two, Reynolds. Oh. Play on. Dragged out of it by Rivers. As you can hear the bomber crowd uh, saying, it was well done by Rivers to get away with it. They're not happy down there, the bomber faithful. Right in front of their uh, cheer squad. Bartram goes for Rivers. Essendon scoreless in the seven minutes that have elapsed here in the third quarter. Welsh going for the front spot.
And an umpire forced to call for a bounce. Derek Humphrey Smith joins me Tuesdays for White Line Fever. What's your decision? We'll ask him about that one. Could you have paid a free line? Oh, no, I think uh, right decision by the umpire. Heffernan. Travis Johnston. Good handball. McDonald getting away, squeezing the kick. Robertson and Neitz in a pack. Solomon did well, got rid of Neitz. Beats no her. And Levitt Murray, therefore, forced to wait. All danger. Ward waiting for it. Good closing speed by Bradley to spoil it for McVeigh. Now Solomon. That had danger written all over Didn't it. it. Disaster written all over it. Camparelli running. Lucas and Reynolds again. Where are the crummers for Essendon? Provided in the form of Lucas, who goes to McPhee to put Essendon in front. It's a behind. Well, it's just getting to the ridiculous level now of uh, third and behinds for four goals. Working hard, the Bombers, but just can't quite capitalise. Davey with the kick in duties, finding Travis Johnston. Goes to Whelan. Moved it to midfield fluently. White. Green. Awkward looking kick. Bounces to Neitz. Finds an opening. Hurries it at goal. It's going to land in the square. Bombers have got numbers. Robertson though keeps his feet. Paddles it to space. Heard gets there. Caught by Sylvia. Welsh under siege for now. Bolton does well. Camparelli. And the Bombers stave off another. Demon. Insurgents. Buse knocked it away though from Hill. And Johnston will drive it to Bruce. Well, that's what Cameron Bruce is doing now. He uh, He's running with James Hurd. If James Hurd's going to sit behind the yep. ball, well, Cameron Bruce will play as a permanent forward. And that's where he'll become uh, a very dangerous player for the Bombers. Well, it becomes so dangerous, I think, that uh, James Hurd will be forced to go to the forward line. And that'll be the, the trump if it uh, so develops. We'll go close from here. Lands a couple of metres out. In a pack, Neitz. Terrific mark. As we said, uh, as we said at half time, Dean Solomon doing a great job, but uh, definitely fighting out of his weight division. And that occasion, David Neitz just too big, too strong. Yeah, I think a couple of uh, the other bombers didn't help him out there too much. So focused on preventing their own man from going for the ball rather than uh, going for the ball and knocking it through. Neitz gets his first. Melbourne's lead is eight points. As we have another look at the, uh, the mark here. Yeah, you see that actually uh, Colin Sylvia probably did a pretty good job there, didn't allow uh, the Bomber players to uh, to spoil, but Love of Murray there just had to uh, had to come over the top and, and spoil that one. And that's the thing, when your conf confidence is down, you're more worried about your man rather than uh, helping your teammate out, and uh, that's what they had to do on that occasion. James Heard now uh, gone into the forward line with Ben Holland uh, picking him up. I know it's changed now. McPhee's kick forward, knocked away by Whelan. Johnston's going to run onto it. What can he engineer here? McDonald, now Ward, has some space here. Loads it up from 55. Kick is partially smothered. Solomon, an awkward one to track, takes on Neitz. Got it for Courtney Johns. Goes to McPhee, good kick. And he's off. Oh. Element of risk about it. And Bruce Max. And again, can think about a shot at goal here. I think that was uh, Adam McPhee just didn't see Cameron Bruce there. I think he thought that uh, Jumpers. the uh, two players out there, were, or the three players around on that side, were all bombers. And couldn't have hit him, hit him up yeah. any better. And Bruce will make them pay. Two in a row for the Demons, and it's the biggest lead in the game now, 14 points, here in quarter number three. 
Daniel Ward coming from the ground. I'm just not sure whether that would be uh, having a chat or just a rotation because he went in and David Nietzsche completely ignored the lead and kicked it straight back to the Bombers, but uh, maybe it's just a rotation. But, gee, they need a couple of goals here, Essendon, because Melbourne are starting to look as if they've just got way too much run and uh, are on the cusp of blowing this game apart. And Kevin Shooty throwing things around. Courtney John's now gone to full back on David Neeks, so uh, he continues to try to develop these younger players, give them new experiences, and it certainly will be a new experience for him because uh, Melbourne are starting to get a bit of the ball and they, uh, they look dangerous. Thanks, guys. Cut. We've ticked past the halfway mark of the quarter. John's there alongside of Neeks. As Uze runs onto it, sends it out wide to the outer wing. Heffernan and Green. Heffernan creative. Davey tripped up. Likewise, Slattery. Watson. Slattery pushed. And the Essendon fans say that their sixth free kick of the day was overdue. Here's Bolton. Now, can they hit a target inside 50? Hill should play on, load it up, and drive through a goal. And he does! A leader's goal. Margin is back to eight points. There's no question about that. Uh, Hill is one guy that the, the Bombers probably need a lift from. He kicked a... Uh, that, that was a wonderful goal. And that came about because the Melbourne players were zoning back, allowed Hill to sit outside 50 and uh, probably underestimated the fact that uh, he can kick the ball a long way. And as you can see there, just had far too much space. And it's where the space is now, though, isn't it, often? Just around just, that Just 50. outside 50, yeah. yeah. And uh, if you've got players that can go the distance, it, uh, it makes you... A dangerous opposition because, uh, as we saw there, it was, a, it was really an easy goal for Hill. I reckon, uh, just going back to the Sydney Richmond game, that's where the Swans looked as if they had almost uh, premeditatedly set up to get guys across that forward 50 and take a ping from there. Bruce towards Bate. McVeigh with the spoil. Bradley bumped out of it by Robertson. Johnston oh, crafting an agile there. Just don't leave this bloke alone, he's too smart. Whether he's off the back line or uh, pushed into the forward line, he reads the play so well, knows when to go forward and when not. And there's a good combination between uh, Travis Johnson and Cameron Bruce. This for the quick reply. The fifth mark inside 50 for the quarter for the Demons. A good number. Bruce for his second for the turn. And he drills it. And they're back out by 14 points. Well, as we said before, James Heard and Cameron Bruce uh, at the start of this quarter had been running around together. Now James Heard uh, went to full forward, James Heard. He's now on the bench. But uh, that's allowed Cameron Bruce uh, to basically do what he wants to do and kick two goals in this quarter, drifting forward. And again, good setup by Travis Johnston. Reigning best and fairest winner at Melbourne. So the margin, 14 points. And what's become a pretty nice afternoon as Hill feeds the handball to McPhee. And he thumps it deep to the pocket. Lucas getting back, jostling with Holland. Play on is the call. Carroll there as well for some support will get a bounce. He's actually going to give... Uh, the Melbourne selectors and their coach a, uh, a fair headache, Ben Holland, because they've got Brad Miller in the wings, and Ben Holland has come into this side and has done a darn good job on the bigger players uh, in the forward line. And I'm sure they'll find a spot for Brad Miller, but uh, he won't be the walk-up start that probably last year's form suggested he would. Davey had a couple of interesting wind-ups there as though he was going to hit it out, but the handball to Uze, and he's met solidly by Solomon throwing. Does it free up Miller to go to the other end? Well, it could, but their other end is just uh, so successful now with so many uh, smart mid mid-sized players with just the body of Neats around them. Him and Dunn, I think, has done a great job there as a target. Holland goes wide to space. Now, will it stay in for Heffernan? No. Crowd want deliberate and they pay it. And Heffernan... 
Heffernan goes quickly for Lucas who drops a mark he would normally take. Holland with the handball to Green. Look at the run. On the outer wing they're building with Dunn. How quickly it can go from one end of the ground to the other. Green closes to 60. Drives it to the hot spot where Travis Johnston's there in a wrestle. Couldn't take it. Robertson there. A behind is conceded. The clearing kick by Holland. Made deliberate. Peveril now. To the outer side. Stanton peeling off Whelan. Leaping high, boundary throwing. So a different situation, that one. The work on James Hurd continues. Yeah, it didn't look uh, fully fit to me. Jimmy. Play on. Solomon dragged off it. Boundary line, good result for the Bombers. Do you think James Hurd will play on next year, Joe? Uh... I suspect he'd be thinking pretty uh, pretty much about retirement. If that hamstring continues to uh, become a problem. Oh, Chris Heffernan, play on advantage. Camparelli breaks away. Inside 50, Holland, but there's a high one. It will go Carroll's way. It will come back. What do you think, Lone? Should he keep going? Oh, look, I think if, uh, the big question is whether he can get his body right. And uh, at the moment, uh, the body seems to be letting him down, which uh, often happens as you get a little bit older. And if, uh, if he continues to have a year like he's had and, you know, be in and out, and uh, by the look of uh, the work on his hamstring, may well miss next week, um, he may not, he may not uh, want to put himself through it. Well, the boys come at a good time for him, obviously. And he, might be, he might be back for the following one. But he'd be frustrated. He set a pretty high stand, and I'd be, be torn between uh, knowing that the club desperate for his services and whether or not he can produce at a level that uh, he's happy with. Rivers going forward, taking the mark. If Melbourne get the next one, it would really make it tough for the Bombers. Five and a half minutes remaining here in quarter number three. Rivers, will he hit the top of the square? He will. Robertson on Neats. Spoiled by Johns. Roving is Philip Reed. And he bounces at home. And Melbourne look on their way. And that was a great kick by Rivers. And uh, the reason why it was a great kick, because it didn't go to the goal square. If it goes closer to goal, Jared, and often uh, players think that putting it in the square is the best option, but it's not. It's actually to the top of that square, as you can see there. What that allows you to have is space towards goal and also in front of goal. It gives you a little bit more room to move, and uh, Reid has just read that better than anyone and uh, was actually the only player that was front and square to that particular kick. I'm not sure how many goals he would have kicked in his time at Melbourne. Clinton, he's, That's uh, number eight. He's made a career out of being uh, almost a football version of a splinter. <laughs> he's just under your nail or in your foot and uh, aggravating character, but he's done yeah, a good job. How's he surfing? Well, he's surfing. Evidently, he's uh, pretty high quality. Bruce, deep to half forward. Bombers have really got to stand up here if the heads go down. It could get lopsided. Love it, Murray. It's 21 the margin now. Five minutes from the final change. And that's out on the floor. Thank you, thanks. It's been a four goal to one quarter for Melbourne. And they're building here with loose men. Bates 60 out. Thumps it long to the top of the square as well. And Neats takes the mark and will send Melbourne to the better part of five goals in front. I'm not too sure. I don't know how many times Courtney Johns has played uh, full back. But he just, uh, he just got under that ball. It was uh, something that he'll learn from. As I said, Kevin Cheedy thrown him a tough job in playing on one of the uh, great plays of the Melbourne Football Club. Neats has kicked his two goals here in this third stanza. And it's 10-10 to 5-13. Yeah, you can just see... Uh, pushes his legs. I mean, no leg strength at all here. Just pushes him out. Yeah, that was just far too easy. Has Scotty Cummings ever played a fullback? Yeah, Sheeds maybe do that a couple of times when I was being naughty. It's punishment, was it? 
Uh, he called it a learning curve. And when you went there, Scott, did you deliberately play badly so you weren't sent back there? I should say, yes, it was deliberate, but no, I was just terrible at it. White with the hit out. Stanton, an effective kick. McVeigh putting the tackle on. Hefferton now, it might free up a little bit here. Watson, Reynolds. Kicked two goals in the opening term. Kicks to Lucas, who out jostles Carroll. Takes the mark and can try and strike off one of those needs goals. Well, the good news for the Bombers is it doesn't look as if James Hurd's hamstring is anything other than tight. Yep. Because he's about to come back on. back on and uh, the physios have worked on him regularly. And they'd have to be a bit careful with him because he hasn't played for some time. He doesn't want to get into the fatigue department. Lucas gets his second. The margin back to 21 points. And already, the feeling around the ground, you can feel it permeating through the glasses if this game is shot. Yep. And that's not the essence of even last year. They, you would always say that, you know, they're just around the corner. But Melbourne is a much different side, and Essendon clearly is so low on confidence that the belief is just not there at the moment. They need to just find another goal or two before three-quarter time, at least one, just to give them something to run into the huddle with. Let's go back to Scott. Yeah, Henry Slattery's has come off the ground uh, and had a fair bit of work done on his uh, calves, which it just looks a bit tight. But Colin Sylvia has come off, taken the right boot off and had a lot of work done on the ankle and uh, it doesn't look good at all. Bruce hurrying the kick to half forward where Davey, Will of the West, fond to it, feeding it for Uze. Working with McDonald. Neeks on the lead. Boundary throwing. There is Henry Slattery stretching out. Solomon on the bench with Watson and Stanton for the Bombers as McDonald. Now Neitz knocking it in the path of bait. Can he pick it up? Runs into Hurd. Reed lurking again. McVeigh is tackled. Hot spot for the Demons will get a bounce. That was one of those ones uh, where a player head over the ball. I think uh, maybe in past weeks you would have seen a player come in there yeah. and James Hurd elected to let him come through and drag and, him and down. drag him down, which is the right option, and that's exactly how you should approach the guy with his head over the ball, as James Hurd did on that occasion. Matthew Bate not happy with the decision there to be penalised for holding the ball. Umpire said you took him on. Welsh in the back pocket. Can the Bombers get the next one before three quarter time? to stay in touch. We're down to two and a half minutes to go. Mark Johnson's kick, a dangerous one. Will it be costly? Bait about to be wrapped up. Got the little handball away. Jason Johnson couldn't clasp it though. And it's going to be Melbourne breaking clear. Green booting it long. Peveril eyes for the footy. Affects the spoil. Lyndon Dunn though is waiting. Gets it onto the right foot. Snips a goal and kicks a beauty. Terrific goal by Lyndon Dunn. And that's just not what the Bombers wanted after a turnover coming out of defence. Good effort by Brad Green. Just uh, got the ball forward. Good turnover by the Demons. And that's the sort of stuff you want to see. Peveril coming across the top. But the punch had to clear the Melbourne player, Lyndon Dunn, waiting down there. He just swooped on that. He's got some skills, this kid. And he's uh, starting to build some experience into his game. He's been a real fine for Melbourne this year, hasn't he? he uh, stepped in at centre-half forward and doing the job. Kicked nine goals now in his seven games. The 19-year-old out of Mooney Valley. 2.02 remaining in the third quarter. Melbourne are back by 27 points. Effort and tackle. Bruce steals the handball. White under pressure. Bait for Chris Johnson. Wide ball. Robertson running onto it, Lovett Murray on his hammer. And it's a boundary throw in, last touch deliberately by Robertson. <laughs> Another look. Lovett Murray, long ball, McPhee in a wrestle with Ward, who takes it well. Goes short, Jeff White. 
Melbourne can think about taking some time off the clock here as White says we're going to settle it down. Sheeds on the boundary line already. No one rushing at White so he can take his time. Go long to a contested half order though. Bradley gets in front. Robertson pleading for a free saying Lovett Murray kept him out of it. Heard. Can he be the architect here? Jason Johnson. Now Lovett Murray. This is better. Some run about the Bombers. Down to a minute to go in the quarter. Long ball inside the 50. McBee! That's a great one. Leaping high as Hill skittles a couple. And McPhee will have an important kick at goal here. It was a great mark, Jared, because uh, he had the traffic coming the other way. He knew that uh, more than likely he was going to get met by those players coming in that direction and kept his eyes on the ball the whole time. As you can see there, that, that's a terrific mark. And simply must convert six goals, 13 in front of goal today, the Bombers. It would drag them back to within 21 points at three-quarter time. And he kicks the goal. Well, still within the realms. That's what they needed. And uh, years gone by, you always knew that uh, the Bombers would keep going. I think you made the point uh, before, Clinton, that there was always someone, James Heard, more often than not, gets them, uh, gets the boys fired up. You just, uh, they needed that goal, but you just get the feel that there's just not enough players for the Bombers that, uh, that are going to get them over the line. Yeah, I think the, uh, the great disparity between the two clubs is just the level of runners. Melbourne look as if they've got a dozen blokes who are still pushing forward and still running hard. Oh, advantage paid here. Davies away with 10 seconds to go. And he kicks the goal! As if on cue. With three seconds remaining in the quarter, Aaron Davy delivers. And as you were saying, Jared, just a few more runners. And that's one of the best in the business. I think they're doing good uh, to see him in the centre bounce. Starvation corner is a half forward flank, and when you've got a reputation uh, like this guy's building, then you've got to have other tricks up your sleeve rather than just being uh, on the half forward flank, and then clubs are going to just set out to stop you. Stick him in the middle as they've done, and I think they're going to see an even better player. Aaron Davies' goal, potentially a backbreaker. It caps. A seven goal to three Melbourne quarter in the third term. And they've got a strong grip on this game, leading by 27 points with a quarter remaining. Well, in many respects, I think that was the uh, Cameron Bruce quarter. I thought that uh, at the start of it, he came out, uh, stamped his mark on the game, went forward, kicked some goals, and uh, really did break the back of the Bombers. And uh, I think that... If the Bombers can kick a goal or two at the start, then we've got a game uh, but potentially Melbourne could really go away and have a big win here. Some frustrations, as you saw, from the Essendon camp towards the umpires. We'll come back and talk more about it. Melbourne by 27 points with a quarter remaining on Fox Footy Sunday. Couldn't get to all eight games? Then catch the winners for a complete wrap-up of the round. The Winners is your one-stop shop for all the round's best highlights. The Winners, tonight, 7.30 local. Called. Oh, she seems nice. Fun meets functionality with a new Motorola Razr V3X. Hello, Moto. Ten, nine, eight, seven. The end of financial year is nearly here, so name your number now because Toyota dealers are ready to deal. Seven. Seven C Kluger All Wheel Drive V6 CV Auto now just thirty nine nine ninety. Four. Four-wheel drive, Pardo GXL petrol or turbo diesel from just $49,990. Three. Two. One. Get in now because Toyota dealers mean business. It 
happens all the time. Oh yeah. It gets into your mind. Oh yeah. A voice keeps telling you. Oh yeah. Only hungry jacks will do. Oh yeah. I just gotta have it. Oh yeah. Hey, Fran, it's just like ringing. Yeah, it's the third time this quarter. Gee, something really stinks. Maybe it's your kicking. No, it's your glove. It reeks. My lucky glove. I never wash it. I think I'm going to pass out. Yeah, smell the glove. Don't miss a moment of every game of the AFL season. Call Foxtel Digital now on 131 999. Join us on Tuesday night for a man simply known as Mad Dog. It has to be Robbie Muir. Plus a man who is known as the new John Coleman. Alan Noonan from Warrigal. Then join Ron Barassi for some great 1986 moments from the Fox Footy Vault. All part of your legendary Tuesday night lineup right here on Fox Footy. I'd like you to get out of here. <laughs> have a little bit of a look at that. Oh, God, you're a little quiz boy. I'd like you to get out of here. <laughs> Central Rewind, Wednesday on Fox Footy Channel. Melbourne look as if they've got a dozen blokes who are still pushing forward and still running hard. Oh, advantage paid here. Davies away with 10 seconds to go. And he kicks the goal. As if on cue. As if on cue, indeed. What a way to finish quarter number three. A seven-goal quarter for Melbourne to wrestle control of this game. 12-10-82. 27 points to the good of Essendon. 7-13-55. Lucas and Reynolds each with two for the Bombers. Robertson with three goals all in the first half for Melbourne. McDonald, again getting plenty of the footy, averaging 21 a game this year. Has 20 possessions to three-quarter time as we take you to ground level. And Scott Cummings. Thanks, Clinton. Well, what a fight up Jimmy Hurd. That was, he uh, called the boys in himself, took control and screamed at them. No more excuses, no more missing goals. Let's make it happen. And he was fired up, Jimmy. It was good to see him that passionate about it all. Uh, Neil Danaher, well, he took care of it all himself, held the whiteboard himself, made the decisions himself. And uh, they are very, very keen to snuff this game out very early. They want to attack in the first 10 minutes and get rid of Essendon uh, in 10 minutes in this last quarter. All right, look out for that. Thanks, Scott. As they're called in again, the Bombers tight knit huddle. Let's check the final score at Launceston. Hawthorne and Tigers replay following when we're done with here at the Dome on Fox Footy. So if you don't want to know the final score, look away now. Plenty of talking points to emerge from this game. Bomber fans haven't been happy with the umpiring, but they want a free kick here. What's your decision? The white line is even deliberate out of bounds, paid against Ben Holland for what uh, Demon fans felt was a very respectable clearing kick, Wayne. But the umpire said, no, this one is deliberate out of bounds. Well, I think he's a bit stiff there, Ben Holland, to be honest with you. He kicked it to the space, had a bit of a, uh, well, really, didn't even really have a bounce. I, how he paid that as deliberate is beyond me. Final term on Fox Footy Sunday. Will the Bombers provide that surge that their former skipper called for? 27 points down, staring down the barrel of an 11th straight defeat. Kevin Schutte starting the quarter on the bench. White to Travis Johnston. Will it be the perfect start for Melbourne? Robertson, a bullet of a handball at bait. He gathers. Back for Robertson, a long way from home. McDonald, Essendon chasing tails. McDonald, good kick. And Dunmark's right on the 50. Well, he just uh, stayed around that forward 50. Kevin Sheedy there, coaching from the bench. And uh, Kepler Bradley was expecting the long kick, and he had uh, just dropped off the back trying to guard the space in front of Neitz. So it's a smart kick to find Dunn. Dunn's going to hit the top of the square. Neitz the target. Davy lurking. Robertson. Bartram. Bate. No one can get free. 
Good pressure defensively. We'll get a bounce. Just the sort of player that uh, Essendon have got her on earth, Aaron Davey. Somebody with some genuine speed to you know, go from one end of the ground to the other and get the ball in quickly. Lloyd coming back. They're going to have the uh, big blokes up there, but they need to get more mobility and speed in the middle. Oh, Travis Johnston caught by Peveril in one of those awkward ones where he could do nothing about it. And Peveril goes quickly because McLean breaks to the outer side. Getting some run. Oh, the kick lets him down. Chris Johnson, though, couldn't get it from Melbourne. Carroll Will wrapped up. Got the handball away. Rivers a fumble together. Works with White. Now Chris Johnson for McDonald, for Green. Robertson in front. Caught by Peveril. High tackle. As you see it again, he plays on with a handball to McDonald and goes to Dunn with a good kick. Well, that's just a turnover from Adam McPhee, just uh, not good enough. And as you said at the start of the game, Jared, uh, if you can't kick the ball in today's footy, well, you don't win too many games. And that, uh, that just wasn't good enough from McPhee. And now Dunn has a, uh, another shot at goal. I reckon Darren Gass was a perfect case in point. It's almost getting to the stage if you can't kick, you can't get a game. Yep. And Dunn, from a tight angle, splits the middle. His second goal of beauty. On a day where Essendon have wasted many chances, and here's one of them, Melbourne, with the better finish. It just wasn't the right option. He uh, decided to go short. He actually had Mark Johnson as a long target inside the forward 50, but trying to pinpoint through that area, yep. as we know in today's footy, turns over and goes back up the, up the other end very quickly. And uh, Adam McPhee's a good kick. Normally. And right now, it's not the time to make a mistake for the Bombers because when you go off the ground, you're staring Sheedy in the face rather than just hearing his voice down the phone line. Back in the centre, 33 points adrift. Watson. The clearance deep to full forward. Rivers! At least he's there by himself at the moment, so he'll get plenty of the footy this quarter. He goes down there. And that's, uh, and that's why he won the Rising Star a few years ago. That's what uh, became his trademark. Yeah, it did. Jeff White also having a pretty good game as another midfielder. Carroll, the man who went down in the marking contest, slow to get up, but up he is as on screen with the trainers as McDonald delivers to Chris Johnson. Now Uzo, as the Bombers get back. So Uzo can have time and send it wide for McDonald. Makes him work. And he can't keep it in. Boundary throw in. 23 to 3 touches in the four minutes of this third quarter. As Rivers says to his teammates, where that one? They had a heavy case of friendly fire earlier, the year, earlier in the year with Sylvia and Ferguson. Ward. Towards half forward, Bate. Bounce eludes him, Welsh. Slattery, back for Welsh. Ugly passage of play there. Scott Cummings is the coach, vocal there at ground level. I don't know, he's fairly uh, well controlled actually. I'm nervous, I'm only 15 minutes away from him. I'm get those chills again. Just let him run in the footy and we'll be fine. Did our colleague here fire you up, Scott, on Wednesday night as McDonald breaks clear into goal and hits the post? Look, I think the boy's got a bit of a future. A um, little too serious for my liking, though, Clinton. <laughs> the margin is 34 points. As Essendon work it to the outer side, Rivers forces it away from Jason Johnson. Scotty, they said the whiteboard was uh, just a mass of facts and statistics and instructions. Did he overcoach? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't paying attention to anyway. <laughs> that Mark Johnson hurries a kick to half forward. And there's a free going to Jared Rivers. Let him get the footy, thanks. Stay there. Well, in the space of what are we up to, round 12, Melbourne have gone to the start of the year from uh, a side most people thought were a good chance to make the eight to right now. They're right up there with the uh, Swans, 
and Adelaide as a side that can win the Premiership and West Coast, obviously. No doubt about that, and uh, it's because no uh, no superstars. I don't think anyone has had an outstanding year just playing good, clean football. And the Bombers, conversely, continuing to make errors by foot as Holland kicks to half forward and bait. He's one of the reasons, him and uh, two or three other inclusions into this side. So much run, youth, and the old man is firing up front. He's added 29 goals for the season. The youngsters injecting their enthusiasm in the group. And Nice is going back to have a shot. And if he kicks it, it's a 40-point game. It was only eight the difference midway in the third quarter. He's actually been kicking quite well from these types of uh, distances over the last few weeks. And that trend continues. Neitz gets his third of the second half. And in not a great deal of time, Melbourne are out by 40 points. Jeff, Jeff White's come off for his uh, quarterly rotation as well, about a minute earlier than he has done in the first uh, three quarters. We'll see if Travis Johnson follows shortly. Good kick. Tough shot at goal from that position. But as you pointed out, Wayne, he's uh, been pretty accurate since... Uh, particularly from outside 50. He has. Yeah. One of the best in the league. 14-11 to 7-13 now. So Melbourne have really taken control. Jared Rivers still loose man at the back. And Mark Johnson's a loose man for the Bombers. Jamar hurries a kick forward. Slattery the spoil. Oh, Green buffeted off it by Hill. Had a glance at the umpire. Kick Green looking for a free. Play on the call. Jason Johnson the mark. Mark Johnson on the run. Target McPhee. Keeps his feet well. Now goes to ground. Chris Johnson the tackle. We'll get a bounce. Another look at the Green Hill collision. And that is just uh, perfect football by David Hill. He came in sideways, went for the football, knocked Green out of the way, and uh, that was a good decision and well played by Hill. Bombers deep in attack. Hard to extricate it quickly from that mess. 35,019 on hand for this match. 14 minutes remaining. Shamo. Hill steals it and from the tightest of angles misses to the near side. Courtney Johns' learning curves are over for the day. Dean Solomon's going back on the Neats. Seven goals, 14 is the Bombers return. After the bye, they're back here at the Dome to play the Kangaroos. Holland. Now Carroll. Holland again building his numbers. Bartram running into heavy traffic. Bate bailing him out. Although he kicks to a two on one. And Hill leaping high, couldn't mark Bradley for Monfries. For Bradley, for Monfrey. And now he retreats all the way to the defensive end. Dean Solomon in his 150th game. Goes for Lucas. Now Watson. Remember, the Bombers were right in a lot of their games early. Three goal loss to Brisbane, 11 points to the Bulldogs, 17 to Collingwood, one to Hawthorne, two to Richmond. 15 to the Eagles, but it has fallen away in the last three weeks. Monfries for Welsh, back for Monfries. A season that promised so much when they beat Sydney here in the opening round. Jason Johnson for Solomon, for Lovett Murray. Can they get something now? Lovett Murray kicking long. Lucas falling back, couldn't take it. Bolton now under pressure. Herd's about to be mown down, is wrapped up. Carroll, he's caught by Lucas. High. An exasperated look on the bomber veteran's face.
Carroll wide ball, boundary throwing. Well, the Sting's certainly gone out of this game, and uh, you can just tell, you wouldn't say that uh, the Bombers are running around with their, their heads down, but just get the feel that uh, this group, and losing 10 games in a row, you'd, uh, it's understandable that uh, they are flat. And uh, it's unusual watching them, because I've never seen the Bombers look as flat as they are right now. Bolton for Welsh, for Bradley. They talked about careers being potentially on the line over the closing 12 weeks of this season as McPhee marks. Stanton in front. Mark Enfred. Made the comment though uh, a couple of weeks ago with the Bombers uh, and, and the youth that they're blooding this year. They have a bit of luck with injury next year and uh, you know if, if her does play on obviously Matty Lloyd will be back but all of a sudden the Bombers could quite easily I think next year go dramatically up the ladder. I mean, let's be honest, they're going to finish more than likely in the bottom uh, three this year. But uh, I can't see them staying down there for too long. I honestly think that they've got a talented list and with a few, with a bit of luck with injury, I think they can go up, get back up the ladder quite quickly, as has Collingwood this year, purely because of the fact that they've had all their players out on the park, which uh, the Bombers haven't been able to do this year. Yeah, well, they've got good young stocks in big blokes and some good older stocks in Lucas and Lloyd, Fletcher. Yep. got a couple of years left in him. It's the run. They've just got to unearth midfielders, half-backs, half-forwards to get their flexibility and uh, mobility back. Yep. Three. They could well get first or second crack in a pretty rich draft. Is that coming back for Robertson? Yes, it is. And he's going to line up for his fourth goal. When we look at uh, Port Adelaide, it's another one that at the start of the year we thought that uh, you know they were a bit slow through the midfield. Yeah. All of a sudden they've blooded some uh, some young kids and the emergence of a couple of kids that have uh, played over the last couple of years, and they look uh, they're starting to look very dangerous again. Port Adelaide, and who would have thought that six seven weeks ago? I think uh, we saw the guy that uh, is really turning it on a few weeks ago, Sean Burgoyne. He's in uh, scintillating form. He's red hot. Robertson's kick from 50 is good. His fourth, Melbourne march on. Victoria's hottest team far and away right now are the Demons. On their way to eight wins from nine starts, Robertson converting that free kick into his fourth major. Yeah, just to finish uh, on the on the Bombers, I think what you will see, though, is a decision made on exactly where they're at. And mm. I think last year, with Hurd still available for one, Lloyd up and running, they went for a Camparelli thinking, OK, let's have one more crack at a, at a title, at a flag. Right now, I think they know more where they are, and there'll be no more Camparellis. They'll be going, uh, let's engender a lot more youth and talent into this list to revitalise it. With a margin of 44 points, the Bombers get the clearance. Mark Johnson delivers to Lucas, couldn't get there. Chris Johnson and Stanton from the other direction. McPhee grabs Chris Johnson up for a bounce. Thanks, guys. So that'll be the end of James Hurd's day, you would think, getting off. Uh, and he gets through injury-free, which is uh, a bonus. And uh, they'll give Paddy Ryder a bit of a chance to... Uh, run around. His numbers, five kicks and 13 hand passes for 18 possessions and four marks. As Camparelli chips it inside 50 where Stanton marks again but he is, he really wanted to pass that one off. He's had four shots at goal for four misses today and Mark Johnson's got it at right half forward. I think Neil Denneher will be pretty happy with this win though, Jared. I, oh, I don't think the Demons have been overly impressive today but you look at the scoreboard and they're going to have a fairly comfortable win here today without playing great footy. And in some ways that is impressive though because they yeah, were poor right. early yep. and you know they just stuck to their guns. They weren't 100% uh, on the on the ball and they've uh, been able to just find that rhythm that uh, has seen them rise up the ladder so much. Good kick by Mark Johnson. His first, the team's eighth. 8 15 though, they missed a lot. Early when they could have capitalised, Melbourne 15 11, the margin 38 points. Heflin getting the ball out. McPhee continues to just uh, get to the possessions. And right now it's probably uh, it is junk time, but you've still got to work hard and uh, convert when you get an opportunity. Bombers wearing the yellow armbands as part of the clash for cancer despite the AFL's. 
directive not to. I suspect that's going to get a big workout on wide line fever this weekend, this week, Clinton. We will seek a comment from the AFL. There was talk that if the Bombers wore them, they would be fine. And then it was pushed in back under plenty of players. Nine minutes from time. Melbourne by 38 points. Second bounce. Watson. Heffernan punches the handball out. They get the clearance. This is Welsh running. Can they finish with something, the Bombers? Stanton going deep. On the lead, Ryder. And Sheeves would be happy with that. Absolutely stag. I mean, he looked good then, didn't he? He did. He looked a really smooth operator. He was the number seven pick in last year's national draft. The 18-year-old out of East Fremantle. Paddy Ryder here with good hands. Now, can he finish with his second goal in AFL footy? For two in a row to the Bombers. He squeezes it through. Well, on that evidence, he looks like uh, he could be a player. He, uh, as if he's got a nice, nice kicking style, style, and uh, the way he reads his ball through the air is, uh, and you know, on a player that has had a pretty good day, and Ben Holland just read it a little bit better, and as you said, Clinton, strong hands from the young fellow. Snuck that one home, but his kicking action looks uh, pretty sound. Could well be the new fish. <laughs> Next year, who knows where Paddy Ryder will be. And it's back to 32 points. The Bombers with back-to-back -back goals in the one quarter for the first time today. Umpires again letting them play from a scramble. And the bounce of the ball falls Essendon's way. Camparelli sends it to half forward. Overrun by Chris Johnson. McPhee, can they get three in a row? Bounces it inside 50. Melbourne with the numbers, though. Rivers to Bruce to Carroll. Off a bounce. That's some good toe, the big man. Handball, though, made oh. Bruce reach back for it. There's a high fend off and Essendon free. Yeah, it's a dangerous one to Cameron Bruce when you throw the elbow up like that. If that connects, yep. yeah. you're, out. you're out. Essendon running. Slattery can drive them inside 50. Gives it a ride. Mike Johnson at full stretch. Couldn't get there. And we'll get a boundary throw in. No, we won't. Jason Johnson kept it in for a moment. We get a bounce. Nothing more frustrating for Mark Thompson when you know you've got 30 odd metres on your opponent and the ball drops just short of you. Midfielders run 20 k's and you've got the forward who's just up there and he's spewing. He has to uh, run a bit uh, harder to get the ball on the silver platter. Watson's kick out of bounds. Good tackle by Wheeler. Uh, used to give it to Anthony Rock when he uh, didn't hit you on the chest. But I used to, uh, no, 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 I was never uh, critical, Jared, of the Von Ballers. Always praise them. You have to, because they're the ones that uh, yeah. the next feed's coming from. Exactly yeah. right. Whelan, heard back on the ground, by the way, for this final seven minutes. Green. Waiting. Going long to the wing. Who's got some... Spring left in the legs, well there's not a lot there at all. Rivers gets the free against Hurd, goes quickly, Travis Johnston. Well he's got open territory, only Camparelli chasing, so he runs to 50, drives it long, and hits the post. Awesome. 15-12 to 9-15. Wow. This will be... Four of the last five, Melbourne over Essendon. Watson to half forward for Lucas. Carroll right there though. Having a terrific year, he kicks here towards Sylvia. He marks 60 from home. Can he get around McVeigh? Goes short for Travis Johnston on the lead and he's got it. Had a great game though, Travis Johnston. Worked hard. And uh, picked up a stack of possessions. Just kicked a goal yet, though, which is uh, unlike him. May make that uh, fix that up right here. Hit the post about 30 seconds ago. We want to make amends. He, uh, he has become one of the elite players in the competition, Travis Johnson. The simple fact that every time he gets it, he uses it. Picked up 11 votes in the Brownlow 
last year. Could be on his way to a good haul in 2006. He gets his first goal today. And as we tick into time on in the last quarter, Melbourne are back out to a very handy 39-point lead. Mark Johnson comes off for a rest. Colin Sylvia, there's a guy that uh, he'd be just so hungry. Just two or three weeks, I think it was three weeks with a rib injury. And uh, he just adds to this midfield. And you've got to consider that Brock McLean out, Brad Miller out, one or two others from Melbourne. They've got some depth there building. And with the exception of David Neitz, it's uh, they are all, and Jose, I suppose, they're all still pretty young. Green in front of Reynolds. Chris Johnson caught McVie, good chase. Camparelli receives and goes to her. Wide one for Lucas. We get a boundary throw. In. Melbourne off the bye, host the surging Port Adelaide at the MCG on the first Saturday in July, their next game. That has plenty of appeal about it. As Stanton hurries a kick out of a pack. And that is conjuring up something out of nothing. The Bombers' 10th goal of the day of beauty. Stanton has struggled in front of goals today. But when required, he engineered something there. And Kevin Sheedy uh, coaching from the bench, as we said at the start of this last quarter. And he, one thing that he will be pleased with, the Bombers haven't thrown in the towel here. They continue to uh, to uh, try. And uh, that was a terrific goal. So Stanton with his first. Six goals, 11 for the season. The margin is 33 points. Many of the 35,019, particularly the Bomber component, They've already made their way for the exits, so they're missing a bit of a late rally. We've got five minutes to go. Good little pirouette from Welsh as he delivers to Johns on the lead. Big man couldn't pick it up. Peveril putting his body on the line. Back for Johns. Ward now. Watson missed it by that much. And it's Melbourne away with Davey. Dangerous to the wing, but Bruce makes it look spectacular. No one stands the mark, so he runs on. Little feet. Good fire by Robinson, although he has hurt himself. And Chris Johnson on the run hits the post, and still Robertson is down. If you are going to fly as often and in the manner that he does, you're going to get landings like this. And he's worn some bruises this year. He shrugged the trainers off, but is still looking croppy as Bradley breaks away with four minutes to go. Long to the wing. Kick was precise for Heffernan. Round 150, it's not there. Heffernan's hurried kick is poor, but Sylvia unable to mark. Rivers. Death little touch for Dunn. Johnston. Up to 24 possessions. Now Sylvia. McDonald is the game leader with 26. Bartram took two on. He's gone. Advantage. Bombers say will go early. Heard. Feeding Stanton. Now. Did he hit a target inside 50? Goes long. McPhee's running back. Is going to get there. No. Bolton was in front with Rivers. And they were hoping that one would go to the back of the pack as Davey finds Dunn. Both Dunn and uh, Bate, Wayne, when you look at him, and, and even Sylvia, given that he's on screen, they, they are kids that are going to end up as big bodied midfielders in the next uh, year or two with a couple of years in the weight room. And you look at Rashudo, who's had such an impact. Kuda Fides is a big bodied midfielder. If you can get two or three of those in the one unit, it just gives you uh, a massive advantage in flexibility and also just pure physicality. No question about that. Cameron Bruce is another one that uh, is a big big midfielder and uh, I mean, look, that's the uh, that's the vogue these days. What's Chris Judd? He'd be uh, six foot, six foot one. Boring. So uh, that uh, certainly the vogue. 
got to be strong over the footy, obviously. And as you said, a couple of years in the weight room. And White with it at right half forward. The lead is 34. For those on the punt, Jared, what was the split and the line at the start of this game for this match? I think uh, from what I was told, it was about 33 points early. So every kick could count. 22 points at quarter time, according to Wayne. As White drives it long, but misses. So a goal either way could still be important for those that have a financial stuff. A bit of goal either way would make a couple of people very nervous. Can the Bombers get that goal? Kick to the wing. Slattery, McPhee, that's a high fend off. Here it is. Good decision. Melbourne going forward with Ward. That's fine. Long to the goal square. Robertson in a wrestle. Bombers are happy to concede a behind. Melbourne 111. Essendon 75. Stanton. Oh, Watson's got space. First game back for Job after... A week out, Holland, caught by Ryder, got it to McDonald. Speaking of blokes who need to do some weights, I think Paddy Ryder's going to see a bit of a steal and medal over the uh, next 6 to 12 months. Down to a minute remaining, j -Mar. And he really is coming on as a player, j -Mar. Good hands, very good hands. The fact that he can go forward and take grabs in the square, we haven't seen it today, but uh, we have this year, makes him uh, a much more valuable player. And he's got the mobility, and there is a head push. Feelings running high there as Camparelli is caught high by Green. Once again, I reckon Brad Green was aware, and he tried to come in on the side. Solomon to half forward. Slattery. Heard. Running out of time. Will they get this final goal? McPhee's on the lead and has got it. And if he kicks the goal, the margin will be five goals. As a wrestle develops, a skirmish, and the siren's going to sound, which will make this tough for the umps if that continues. The margin is all we have to sort out. McPhee... Who has kicked one today, could make it a five goal margin, but they've been inaccurate all day, so it's only fair that trend will continue. Melbourne have won eight of their last nine, as Neil Danaher hosts the 100th coaching win of his career. Six goals, the margin, Melbourne 16-15, Essendon 10-15. The Demons get to the break at 8 and 4, while Essendon have now lost 11 in a row, just three shy of their worst ever losing streak. Down to Scott Cummings. Thanks, Glenn. Uh, what a terrific win. Uh, the Ds are just flying, mate. Yeah, look, uh, we had a tough challenge today. We knew that Essendon were good starters, and they proved that today. Um, it was a hard running game, though, attacking really. It was good to get over the line again. Took you a little while to get moving in the first. Did they take you by surprise with their intensity? No, we knew they'll come out hard in the first quarter. Um, and they played really well. And they, they tackled really well. They put the pressure on. And uh, we just went pushing into the ball. And they were getting to contest the ball. I get half time. They doubled our tally. So we, we just refocused and made sure we could contest the ball. Now you've uh, definitely become the modern ruckman, mate. The uh, the on ball that occasionally takes your ruck up. Yeah, well, we've got the rotation with uh, the big rush, and it helps us both. We have plenty of energy when we come on, so it's working well. Um, Travis Johnson said uh, during the week, no uh, superstars in this side. I think there's a few in the making. Yeah, look, uh, it's an even contribution. Um, you know, one week could be James Dole in the middle, and next week could be Philip Reid. So, um, look, we just work for each other, and it's been paying off. Journey at eight and four, mate, going into a week off. Uh, the boys going to have a bit of time off? Yeah, we've got a few boys who are a bit sore, so it'll be good to have a break. Uh, you enjoy yourself, well done. Thanks, mate. A break that is well deserved. Essendon led this match by five points at quarter time, 2-8 to 2-3.